ladies and gentlemen, Chris Cyborg. Mixed martial arts legend Chris Cyborg looks to cement her incredible legacy with her relentlessly aggressive style. In a war with top contender Leslie Smith, fighting to stake her claim for Bellator Gold. Bellator MMA Live tonight on Showtime, where warriors rule. with the featherweight championship main event. Chris Cyborg defending the title for the second time in a rematch with Leslie Smith. That's the main event coming up later tonight, but what a loaded lineup we have on the preliminary portion of Bellator 259, and no better way to kick things off than what should be an electrifying tilt in the lightweight division. Number nine ranked Alfie Davis welcomes Alexander Shabley to Bellator MMA. Our tail of the tape on this fight. Take a look at these records. 14-3, 19-3, everything else is very close. Both these guys outstanding in the stand-up game. With the official introductions, here is the voice of Bellator MMA, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mohegan Sun Arena as we get set now for Bellator 259. The prelims kick off now with three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first the blue corner at 5'9", weighing in 154.8 pounds. Tonight, in his Bellator debut, he enters with 19 professional victories, three losses. Hailing from Rostov, not the no Russia, presenting Alexander Perseverchabli. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot 11, weighing in 155.1 pounds as a professional. 14 wins, three defeats from London, England. Introducing Alfie, the X-Men Davis. And the referee in charge, Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson is your referee, a special cheerio to our friends watching across the pond on BBC. They are especially invested in this matchup, watching London, England's Alfie Davis, the number nine ranked lightweight in Bellator hey. MMA. Hey. Welcome hey. Alexander Shabli to the Bellator MMA cage, set for three five-minute rounds. And it is Alfie Davis in the red gloves, the newcomer, Alexander Shabli in the blue gloves. Okay. And already, Davis switching stances. Both have won four consecutive fights, so both bring plenty of momentum into this opener at Bellator 259 as they exchange kicks, John. Both of them bring fireworks in the stand-up game. I'm telling you, Alexander Shabley is so technically good. And Alfie Davis on the outside, you're gonna see him moving a lot, but his kicks are outstanding. Shabley attacking the, what well, was the lead leg from Orthodox, but now Davis trying to befuddle Shabley early. Switching stances, trying to disrupt whatever rhythm, whatever tempo Shabli's trying to build. Now, one of the things that you're going to see somewhere in this fight, Alfie Davis is known as the Axe Man. Not many people can throw a very 
good axe kick that is something that can actually land and knock their opponent out. All on Andy Hoog, who you know well. Yeah, rest in power to the K-1 legend, Andy Hoog. And uh, we are seeing early signs of a, a kicking attack. There's a Superman punch from the southpaw stance by Davis. Davis doing a really good job of diversifying his attack and really just trying to confuse Shabli. Really nice job of what Shabli is doing, though. Look at him going to the low leg kicks. Every time, doesn't matter if it's the leg, left leg forward or right leg forward, he's attacking those legs, making it to where that movement of Alfie Davis after that first round, it's going to start to slow down a little bit. Shabli, hand-to-hand -hand combat master of sports and combat sambo master of sports, hoping to put on a masterful performance in his Bellator MMA debut. And, of course, the man who currently lords over the lightweight division is the champ champ, Patricio Pitbull. He has other business to tend to in the featherweight division when he will meet the undefeated A.J. McKee in the $1 million final of the Featherweight World Grand Prix. But a couple of lightweights looking to move up the ladder here tonight. Nice body kick lands for Davis. That was a very nice body kick by Davis, but you'll notice that Davis is starting to get... He's getting pushed onto his back foot, which means Shabli's starting to win this battle of positioning. Just past the midway point of our opening round. Davis, beautiful, beautiful one-two strike by Alexander Shabli. Davis moving to his left. Shabli able to avoid the low leg kick just as Davis avoided the body kick from Shabli. Three minutes gone here in the opening round. Tactical start. Interesting footwork by Shabli John. Well, he's doing a good job of just taking his time, not overextending and just taking little movements that start to cut the angle off on Davis as Davis, you see, is starting to move. He's moving to, towards his left side. And he's been able to do that. And he's trying to set up that left kick. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Davis's camp imploring him to keep moving with under 90 seconds left in the opening round. Davis from the south boss dance. Backing up and Shabli, I'm impressed with Shabli's footwork and again attacking the lower leg. Done a great job of attacking that lower leg at times. In the wrestling area, both guys are confident, but Shabli definitely has the better wrestling attack. Yeah, Shabli known to be an intelligent fighter, rarely makes mistakes. One of the best prospects out of Russia and uh, a lot of great talent coming out of Russia these days. Under a minute remaining here in the opening round of this, the first fight on the Bellator 259 prelims. And again, we welcome you from wherever you may be watching on God's green earth. That kick blocked by Shopley. Shopley very calm, cool, collected, already showing maturity, timing the spinning kick by Davis that turns into a takedown for Shopley. That's exactly what you're talking about when you, when you make those big, you know, movements like Davis just tried to do. A guy ties it right, comes right into it. Now it becomes an easy takedown. He didn't have to work hard for it. Now he's got you on your back. And Shabli has a very competent ground game. Good ground and pound and good submission. Already showcasing a high fight IQ from Alexander Shabli as the first five minutes come to an end. Let him get extra space. He's been fighting around that. Here we go, nice and easy. Okay, sit down, is it? You good? Okay, you've got to let go a little bit, yeah? He's yeah. backing you up. You've got to, if you're going for your left kick, you've got to mask it behind, okay, your punches first, yeah? Switch step. Don't always throw it from south. We'll go back to orthodox and set it up a little bit, okay? Look for the takedown if he's pressure you. Try and pressure him back. You've got to go. Set up. Your spin was good, but we're just too close, okay? That's his round. You've got to pressure forward, okay? Yeah. Use your teeth, Alfie. Hard bounce, go in, okay? Back and forth. Don't keep going back, you've got to meet him. Seconds up. Seconds out. And let's walk. Stand still. Come on. So we are set for round number two.
And uh, when we hear the bell, we will get Big John McCarthy's unofficial score from that first Ready? frame. Ready? Hey! Pretty simple round to score. You look at what went on, the better striking, the movement, the takedown. Shobley gets that round 10-9. Yeah. What that guy The real question is in this round, is Alfie Davis gonna stop what he's doing? He likes to stay on the outside, but he needs to every time that he starts to get pressed by Shobley, he needs to make Shobley pay for that movement inside. Davis with the tell on the Superman attempt, avoids that. Right cross from Alexander Shobley. Shobley and Davis looking for their fifth consecutive victories. Half of Shobley's four-fight winning streak. Uh, the wins have come courtesy of his power, while Davis has gone the distance in all four of his wins during his current winning streak. And again, Shobley doing a good job of attacking the lead leg. He's been just hacking at those legs, both left and right leg throughout this fight. It, it's not that it's gonna stop Alfie Davis and what he does, but it does slow his attacks down. His legs get heavy. They start to just move a little bit slower and you see things. It's just easier to defend. Davis says he's a cheeky chap with a cheeky fight style. I have nothing to say about that. He said it for you. <laughs> Former kickboxing <laughs> champion. Shabli really looking to left that, excuse me, land that left hook. Hey, he just threw it again. He sees the opening. He sees that Alfie Davis is starting to drop that right hand as he moves, just like he did right there. He's looking to land that left hand. And Davis back to orthodox and back to having his lead leg chewed up by the kicks of Alexander Shabli. Alfie, I need work now. And Davis Corner imploring him to work. Let's go. Come on. Earn that check, Mr. McCarthy. Yeah, well, you've got, you've got to you know, look at what's going on. And right now, it's Alexander Shotley that's leading this dance. He's the one that's really in control of where the fight's taking place, when the encounters really you know, start to blast off. So Alfie Davis needs to, he needs to change that. He needs to start becoming more offensive, start to take more chances. Because if it continues in this manner, he's going to end up losing a decision. Shotley would love to crack the the top 10 facing a number nine ranked Davis. And Shopley doing a good job, but just missing again with that counter right hand, but really loading up on it, John. He loaded up on it, and Alfie Davis did a nice job of sliding his head by, but it was close. And Shopley continues to allow Davis to move to his left. He does not make him pay for it. There's a nice one-two from Shabli pulling the trigger on a combination. Two minutes left in the second. And again, the Englishman's corner wants more action, wants more intensity, as I'm sure the fans watching on the BBC do as well, John. One thing you're seeing from Alfie Davis right now, and he comes from a Taekwondo background, so you know, kicks are a big part of his game. But you need to hide those kicks. If, if you're just throwing the kicks straight out, it's easy to see. It's easy to see the setup, and Shabli's not having a problem with him. So he needs to use his hands to set those kicks up, hide those kicks behind the hands. He should have more you know, success against Shabli. Master of Taekwondo, Valerie, Valerie Loretta and Hannah Guy will kick off Bellator 259's main card tonight, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Showtime. Blood now around the left eye of Davis as he's been bloodied. He's been cut by Alexander Shabli. He's sharp striking. You see Shabley really closing the distance on him. That shot that made that cut happen, that hurt him. You saw him backing off. He circled out. He really felt the effects of him. And Davis continues to look for the dramatic. 45 seconds left in the second round. And Davis with that spinning attack that misses. Don't you wish you could sometimes say those words on, as a color commentator, John? Yeah, just a couple. Uh, that was a big right hand to Shabla, and he's just right, you know, systematically starting to just 
pull away from Alfie Davis with the shots that he's landing. He's the one that's in control. Oh, oh there is oh, a beautiful dude. spinning hook kick by. The heel kick oh, lands oh, for oh, Shogley. So, even in Davis's bread and butter, Shogley proving to be more effective. Oh, Alfie. Alfie's balls to the wall this round, yeah? Here's the shot right here. I believe cut Alfie Davis that little left hook right across, just sliced right across, right across as Alfie Davis came in. There it was right there. Clean shot. You see Alfie Davis really circling out. Nice leg kick by Shabley. He's just really established that he's the one controlling the range. He's the one making the determination when the engagements take. Here was that beautiful spinning heel kick. Right upside. Wasn't really blocked, Seconds but out. it just didn't have the, the length back. to land with the speed that he was trying for, but still landed. Beautiful shot. Stay there. The instruction from Davis cornered Turn. that stood out. They want him to go balls to the wall in the third and final round, and the doctor now making sure that he will be able to compete in the third and final round. He's good. Thank you, Doc. I'll keep an eye on him for you. Here we go, gentlemen. I see what Todd Anderson said, did there. there I'll go. keep an Ready? eye hey. out for you. Oh, All right, third and final round, we have Alfie Davis in the red gloves, Alexander Shabley in the blue gloves, both in the midst of a four-fight winning streak, Shabley fighting for the first time under the Bellator MMA banner and continues to be very efficient in the attack and with that counter right hand. That was a very efficient right hand, landed beautifully. He's just controlling everything in this fight right now, and that is unusual when you're talking about Alfie Davis. He's the guy that normally is frustrating his opponents, keeping them off balance, and he's not able to do that with Shabley right now. So why isn't Davis able to go balls to the wall as his corner would like him to do. Well, he's here. right now throwing those kicks. He's, he's trying to open up, but he's when you have a guy that keeps hitting you off of these shots, take a look at those strike stats right there. 33 of 61. He's landing at over 50%, and you can see that that's not happening on the same side with Davis. So he's getting frustrated because he knows I'm throwing, I'm not landing, and I'm getting tagged. Yeah, there's the style, but he needs more substance here. A minute gone in the final frame of this lightweight matchup to begin the proceedings here at the Fight Sphere for Bellator 259. That kick blocked by Shabley. Meanwhile, what's impressed you the most about Alexander Shabley here in his maiden voyage in Bellator MMA? Well, just the fact, that look how tight he is with his technique, just taking his time, doesn't have a lot of exaggerated movement. And when that opening comes for him to either throw the right hand, left hand, he takes it and he lands with power. And he is proficient in the counter attack. And beautiful left hand there as he tried to avoid the incoming fire from Davis. And now from the southpaw, Go, position go, 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 that go, kick go, go, was go, go, caught go, go, momentarily go, blocked by go, Davis Ten of Shabley's 19 go, 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 wins have come go, 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 via go, 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 form go, 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 of go, go, knockout go, go, for Davis go, go, five go, of his 14 go, wins have come due to his power, misses with the spinning back fist, and, and John, that's been the case throughout the fight. He's going for these flashy finishing sequences. He, he needs to get back to the basics. You're exactly right. When you're, when you're using these big techniques and you're not the guy in control of the fight, those techniques usually are not going to be effective, and that's where, that's why you're seeing Shabley's throwing some of those techniques, and they're landing. Yes, and, and we just saw him land a combination there. Shabley, again, very efficient, very accurate, very precise. And very much in control. You're talking about those basics. Shabu is using those basics all the time. That's what's allowing those other techniques to work. And then goes in. Now the complete mixed martial arts fighter takes from the ground. That's what you need to do in this sport. Times it perfectly for a second time in this fight. Which makes it that he used zero energy in getting that takedown. That's what makes it so impressive. Under two minutes now left in the third round with Alexander Shabley working from top position. Short elbow strike, another elbow smashed by Shabley. See Alfie Davis, he was utilizing a butterfly guard with the one leg inside. 
getting hit by the elbows, decides, no, I'm going to just hold on to the leg, but he needs to start thinking about it. He's got to get himself either back to his feet or start working towards a better position for a submission because right now he doesn't have a whole lot, and Shabley is slicing through. Yeah, Shabley looking to improve his position. Half a butterfly hook employed by Davis, who has to do much more than control posture right now with less than 90 seconds left in the fight. Just like his corner said, he, he needs to step on the gas. He needs to go because I have him down two rounds to none right now, and this third round is definitely getting away from him also. And his top 10 ranking very much hanging in the balance here against Alexander Shabley, whose four-fight win streak will continue. We are a minute or less. Beautiful Find position. Out. Beautiful position by Shabby. You see how he was controlling that thigh? He used his foot and his knee with his shin on top of the thigh to make sure that Alfie could not get him into full guard. Just a beautiful job of maintaining control. You see Alfie Davis going back to that half butterfly guard, but that half butterfly guard is not going to get him out of this position. Yeah, there's no explosive and energy. The, and there's no submission that he's going to get from that. And so you've got to figure out, I've got to go to something different. Well, and Shabley's looking to improve his position. Meanwhile, Davis forced to just defend, forced to just try to control Shabley as Shabley continues to work from top position, delivering a series of body shots with his left, trying to posture up and continue the ground and pound. Active on with his hips is Davis, but it seems to be too little, too late. Final seconds of our opening battle here at Bellator 259. Good job. That was a very effective fight by Alexander Schaub. You talk about a guy coming in, a lot of pressure being in a new promotion, a lot of pressure coming in against a guy who's ranked and you're not ranked in that promotion. And he did exactly what you want to see your fighter do. He came out, he established that I'm going to take the center of the cage, I'm going to be the guy in control of the position of the range, and he just systematically broke Alfie Davis down throughout the fight. The Russian fighters have a, a way of systematically breaking <laughs> down their opponents, John. Yeah, they, they tend to, uh, you know, it, it, you take a look at it, it's exactly what you were talking about, basics. They're so solid in the basics. They're so good with their body positioning. They don't make big mistakes, and that's why they win big fights. Take a look at these shots. Beautiful inside leg kick by Shabley. A lot of power on it. Alfie Davis rushes in, gets hit with a jab. And then you had that spinning kick. Watch the technique. He comes over. Whoa, there comes your beautiful heel kick. Left hand, right hand. Beautiful left hook. And all of these. Watch the timing on this. As he comes in, Alvin Davis comes in. Oh, let me drop levels. Take you down. That took no energy. I feel good. His fight stats are going to be all in the favor of Alexander Shabley. Just a beautiful performance. A stellar striking display from Alexander Shabli. A frustrating night at the office for Alfie Davis. Let's uh, make it official. Let's find out who wins our opener here at Bellator 259. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. All three, Dave Torelli, Jacob Montalvo, Doug Crosby, see it exactly the same at 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Alexander Shabley. A clean sweep on all three judges' scorecards for Alexander Shabley, who wins his Bellator MMA debut, looks impressive in doing so, has now won five in a row as he snaps Alfie Davis' four-fight win streak. Shabley knocking on the door of the Bellator MMA top ten. Well, he was just knocking on Alfie Davis. So <laughs> now he's knocking on the door of other people. They're, you, if you're looking at this fight, you're going, oh, that guy's going to be a problem. All right, it's now time to open the door to what's happening at the fight desk. Here's Jen Brown. Well, thanks, Mar. The door is open, and good evening, everyone. We're excited for an incredible lineup of fights tonight. Of course, joining me to break it all down, former two-time lightweight champ, Mr. Josh Thompson. Now, Josh, let's talk about that fight right there, because I know you were so excited about seeing Shabley's debut here in Bellator. How do you think he delivered tonight? I thought he delivered perfectly. Everything was clean and crisp. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. Also, 
also, he was supposed to fight Brent Primus, which is a completely different style of fight. And he came on and fought Alfie Davis, which is someone who's very dynamic on the feet. Different style and have to prepare on short notice. I, do, I think he delivered. Great job. I'm, I'm really excited, like John was saying. He's going to be a threat in that in that division. Well, Primus is ranked number two in the lightweight division. Davis ranked number nine. Uh, fair to say you think he's going to break into uh, the rankings here next week? Oh, yeah, absolutely. With that performance right there, he's got to be probably somewhere in that nine category now after Alpha Davis. All right, look forward to it. All right, well, so much more to talk about tonight, so let's jump right into it. Tonight's main event, we've got gold on the line with Chris Cyborg. She's defending her featherweight belt for a second time. It's a rematch with MMA veteran Leslie Smith. Now, that fight was over five years ago, Josh. So how much different are these two fighters? from when they first stood across from one another. I don't want to say that they're different, but they just have, they, they've made a couple little tweaks here and there. They were already very good when they first fought. Just, it was Cyborg's night that night. But the tweaks that they've made, we're going to see if it's been a difference over the time frame. Now, you said it was Cyborg's night. It didn't end well for Leslie Smith. So what does she need to do different tonight to have it end differently for her? So I think which her whole game plan is to put Cyborg on her back foot, which is going to be a tough task. It doesn't matter who you are. Not many people have been able to do that to her. So if she's able to do that and implement her game plan and also avoid big shots, if she can do that, I think she can have success. With Cyborg, she just got to push her around, do what she always does. But with Cyborg, though, she's also gotten a lot better defensively. So if she continues to do that and keeps her defense on point, I think she'd have a successful night as well. You know, uh, this is a rematch, and you've had some rematches. What's that mindset going in when you're going to stand across from an opponent that you've already faced and you're familiar with them? Well, it depends. If you won the, if you won the first true. match, you know, with Cyborg, she won. Her confidence is all-time high. With Leslie, though, what she's probably thinking is, I felt your power. I felt the experience. I felt all of those things. And so that being said, she's probably thinking to herself, I know what I need to do to get this done. Well, uh, we look forward to seeing both of them settle it. You know, it's funny. Leslie Smith told us, she goes, I walked out of that cage, and I have been thinking about this fight every single day for five years. She is uh, she's looking for some revenge. And it's thinking about it and then going out there and achieving it is completely different. So hopefully she can get it done, but it's going to be one of those tough tasks. All right, well, that is our main event. It is coming up later tonight. We've got much more coming your way. Stick around. Fight action continues. Bellator MMA coming up. Are you ready for the show? Undefeated champion. Nortino Bali. Bali. Takes on future Hall of Famer. One of the most polished stars in all of boxing. Nonito Donaire. Ready, say, go. He remains at the top of his game. Ready, say, go. Undefeated versus legend. Obali versus Donaire for the Bantamweight World title only on Showtime. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Cyborg. Mixed martial arts legend Chris Cyborg looks to cement her incredible legacy with her relentlessly aggressive style. In a war with top contender Leslie Smith, fighting to stake her claim for Bellator Gold. This is war. War. Bellator MMA Live tonight on Shota, where warriors rule. Bellator 259 prelims roll on with an intriguing matchup in the Bellator bantamweight division. A compelling contest featuring two newcomers to a division that is, well, suddenly cooking here at 135. Brett Johns jumped from the UFC to Bellator, riding a two-fight win streak, while Danny Sabatello takes the fight on short notice, making his Bellator debut. And yeah, he's called the Italian gangster, already speaking like one, using an F-bomb to call out our champion, Sergio Pettis. Let's get through this fight first, shall yeah, we? I think that's a good idea. He needs to get through Brett Johns first, which is not an easy task. Our tail of the tape for this matchup, which is an outstanding matchup, 17 and two against 10 and one. That is a beautiful record by both guys. Both guys are dominating on the ground, on the feet. This should be fireworks. Here's Michael C. Williams. 
For those joining us tonight, live from the UK on BBC iPlayer, we welcome you to Bellator 259 as the prelims move now to the bantamweight division, set for three. Five minute rounds introducing the blue corner. At 5'10", weighing in 135.6 pounds. His professional record, 10 wins, just one defeat. By way of Chicago, he fights out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the Italian gangster, Danny Sapatello. And across the cage, his adversary, fighting out of the red corner. At 5'7", weighing in 135.4 pounds. As a professional, 17 victories, just two losses. From uh, Swansea, Wales, introducing Brad Johns. And the referee in charge once again, Todd Anderson. Third man in the Bellator MMA cage veteran referee Todd Anderson scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the 135-pound division. Brett Johns, Ready? Danny Sabatello Ready? Bite, Ready? fighting for the first time under the Bellator MMA umbrella. Johns in the red glove, Sabatello in the blue gloves. And we are expecting nothing but a big bang in this one, John. This fight, I have been looking forward to this fight for so long. Brett Johns is outstanding, both in the stand-up and on the ground, but Danny Sabatello yes. wrestled at the University of Purdue. He is an outstanding grappler, and he's very heavy on top. And if he can get on top of Brett Johns, he will create a ton of problems. Sabatello, a three-time NCAA championship qualifier, two-time 141-pound Big Ten championship winner as the captain of the Boilermakers, and he has taken Brett Johns to the ground. He's already in that position where he's getting close to having control of his back. Brett Johns is Controlling hands, just taking his time, being smart. Don't make a big mistake right now. Don't give something to somebody. Johns went five and two in the UFC and a major addition to Bellator's greatly improved Bantamweight division as he gets back up to his feet. But now it's Sabatello fishing for the submission. Well, he is fishing for it. He had a little bit of what we call a face crank on him there for a second. Fishing for a submission is a lot better than sleeping with the fishes for an Italian gangster, by the way. Well, if you're the Italian gangster, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but we knew that Danny Sabatello, when he took this fight on a week's notice, we went, man, I'll tell you what, you couldn't ask for a worse opponent to come in on a week's notice if you're Brett Johns because this is a guy that is so good in the grappling aspect with his wrestling. And confidence oozes out of every one of his pores, John. 28-year-old Danny Sabatello, 10 and 1 with three knockouts and four submissions against Brett Johns, who is 17 and 2 with two knockouts and six submissions. And John still defending against Sabatello. Sabatello on his back. Excellent, Johnsy. Very nice job by Brett Johns. Take his time getting that little swing. But you see Sabatello in a seatbelt position. You see that upper and over that with those hands taking his time, using that one hook to try to control body position. Everything he's doing is being smart. Don't go for the craziness. Just keep on riding him. Make him carry your weight. Sabatello says his greatest strength is his imposing his will on his opponent. He says, this fight is going to go wherever I want it to go. I am the best at being tougher and meaner than my opponent. Did I mention he's confident? I don't think you did, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Josh Thompson always tells you, you know, confidence is key, but if there's one thing we know about Danny, he's got a ton of it. For Brett Johns, his only two losses come to current UFC Bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling and ranked contender Pedro Munoz. Yeah, he lost a decision to both of those gentlemen. And again, Brett Johns popping up immediately. So, yes, Danny Sabatello getting the takedown, but trying to maximize his position. He is, but he, he, because he's in position right here and he does have control of the position, he still needs to be very careful of Brett Johns. Brett Johns is a guy that we've seen roll into calf slicer positions and different types of leg locks. So just because you have his back doesn't mean that he's still not dangerous at times. Yeah, Johns defeated Joe Soto in December 2017 via the calf slicer, known for a variety of submissions. Go on, go on. On his head, on his head. Right now you see him looking for that Kimura grip on the arm. The real thing is he's, he's, he wants to actually toss to that side. Nice job by Danny, bringing him up and down. We'll see if he can maintain that position. Johns gets back to his feet. 
This is what happens when you have two guys that are very good in the grappling arts. It is not an easy thing to get a man down to the ground and hold him down when he knows what he's doing. Sabatello continues to try to, well, does drag Jones down to the canvas, but unable to keep him there. He's got and that. now he's got his back. Well, he did. He got that hook in, but again, it's only one hook. He's almost in the same exact position with that seatbelt position. And when you say seatbelt, you see that's because you see the arm over the neck going around, and the other one under the arm, all the way around the body, similar to the way your seatbelt is in your car. But it's a great position to hold on to your opponent. Sabatello has won four in a row since his lone loss to Irwin Rivera. That came so, courtesy of a, a punch to, to the body, but he has been Work in control here in his first Bellator MMA round as he and Johns begin their Bellator MMA journeys. Right now, Danny Sabatello is having a problem because he cannot get his arm free, and it's, Johns is not doing anything wrong. He is holding onto that wrist with the glove. It's legal. Take a look at that round, and a lot of people go, well, you know, who won that round? Because, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of striking. There was grappling, and the grappling was dominated as far as positioning by Danny Sabatelli. He's going to get that round 10-9. Brent Johns needs to figure out, oh, I need to figure out what I'm going to do here. All right, well, Saturday, May 29th, Showtime Championship Boxing presented by Premier Boxing Champions. We have got another barn burner of a card at the Punch Bowl in Carson, California. For former four division champion, future Hall of Famer, Nonito Donaire, challenges undefeated titleist Nordine Umbali. You do not want to miss this. Saturday, May 29th, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, only on Showtime. If we end up in that same position, you got to work to finish, okay? If we end up in that same position, you got to work to get out. Or I'm kind of, all right, good. Ready? Ready? Hey! Well, round number two, and referee Todd Anderson warning both of them that they've got to uh, improve positions, and Sabatello immediately securing another takedown and immediately going to the back of Brett Johns. Excuse me, but is this Groundhog Day deja vu all over again? It is deja vu all over again. There was something that was telling in that moment because it, Danny Sabatello could have taken the back completely with, with both hooks and decided to go back to what he was doing before with that single hook. So we'll There's the roll through by Johns, and John, you mentioned it in round one, the almost an opportunity there to go for the guillotine, but is now on his back. And Sabatello in top position, but in the close guard. Yeah. Johns need, needed to figure out, I can't, I cannot take another round and do the same thing that was done before. That's not gonna work for me. So let me go to the guard. Let me see if I can work a submission from that position. You can breathe that out there. Roll him, roll him, roll him. Sabatello training at the estimable American top team in Coconut Creek, Florida. Always a pleasure to visit with Dan Lambert, the belt collector of all belt collectors. And well, ATT has produced a, a plethora of champions. So you've seen Dan's collection. But they've collected a lot of world-class mixed martial artists at American Top Team. Danny Sabatello wanting to make his bones here in Bellator MMA and continues to work from top position. He is trying, he's, he's doing a good job of staying in the top position, landing strikes at times. You see him trying to swish his hips to get past. Johns brings up, trying to get into a triangle position. That doesn't work for him. Johns really needs to get that separation, pushing the head of Danny Sabatello down, down towards his sternum. That's going to make it where Sabatello has a very tough time landing solid strikes. When you're seeing Danny Sabatello's head over the top of Brett Johns' head, that means that he can deliver powerful strikes, both elbows and punches. 
So just how confident is Danny Sabatella despite taking this huge fight, the biggest of his career on short notice? He predicted a second round of TKO. He has two minutes and 42 seconds to deliver. Easier said than done against a guy like Brett Johns out of Wales. But it's been a tough start to the Bellator MMA journey for Brett Johns. Boy, it has. He's had his hands full. You really have to be impressed by Danny Sabatella as far as not only what he's done so far in the cage, but on a week's notice coming in and putting on this type of performance so far. And John's looking for the escape and just improving position, now being able to go to his feet, but continues to wear Danny Sabatello on his back. Danny Sabatello has got that leg turkey, he loves that leg ride and just goes right back to that seatbelt position to control Brett Johns, keep him where he wants. A decorated wrestler in college, Danny Sabatello using his wrestling background to full effect here with a minute 45 left in the middle frame. Nice work by Brett Johns to use his leg to unlock that leg turk by Danny Sabatello. Sabatello delivers a couple of knee strikes, but still diligently trying to bring Johns to the canvas, and yet there, it's not necessarily a stalemate by any stretch of the imagination, but John's trying to break the grip. Well, what John's trying to do is he's trying to utilize a Kimura grip to put pressure down on that arm. That way, if he can swing out and swing his body to the right, he's gonna be able to put a lot of pressure on the shoulder of Danny Sabatello. Put him on his head. Big lift, big lift. Two of Sabatello's four submission wins have been courtesy of a rear naked choke. Last one came in June of last year against Raymond Ramos, and uh, he stayed active during this pandemic year. Brett John's really trying to make that Kimura hold that grip. He's trying to put a lot of pressure on it. This is similar. You go all the way back to Pratt Pride fighting days. Sakuraba against Henzo Gracie. You need to be very careful if you're Danny Sabatello in that position. I always like going back to those Pride fighting championship days I never die John McCarthy and just as Brett Johns refusing to allow Danny Sabatella to improve his position but in the meantime Brett Johns unable to do anything offensively and he really has not been able to do anything and he's been in the same position looking for a straight arm lock putting a lot of pressure on that but it's not gonna be enough time So definitely pressure building in the Brett Johns corner with just yeah, yeah. one round yeah. left. Let's you can listen win like in. That. Mike's going to talk to you first. Tiny, it's a split. You have to some practice. Battering ram. Battering ram with those knees. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Watch the desperate strikes now. Watch the flying knees, the spin kicks. Now's the time to be super clean with your takedown setup. You understand? Okay. Keep your posture and you win the fight. You could fight the same round. The posture and the movement's gonna win. Don't dive into anything stupid. But don't go rush in. Throw that overhand, switch that self bullet down there. Throw the back hand and let's put him on his back fence. Yeah. Come on. Better, you're better than this. Come on. Of course, when you hear Uchimata, I'm reminded of another Pride FC veteran, Kazuhiro Nakamura, and of course, one and only Ronda Rousey. But obviously, we end up Mike back on Brown. That cage. I need you to work to get out, and I need you to work to advance. We're almost stalled. If it happens, I'm separating. Back to your corners. But John says, please. You got it? You got it? Ready? Hey! Third and final round, Brett Johns in the red gloves, Danny Sabatello in the blue gloves, both fighting for the first time here in Bellator MMA. Do you agree with uh, Todd Anderson's instructions? Well, Todd Anderson is actually trying to bluff a little bit there. He knows that Sabatello's got the good position. Nice Takedown is stopped, and immediately Brett Johns going for the submission. He is going for that. Nice job of Danny Sabatello. Beautiful. Grabbing over the head, bringing his hips around. That takes the pressure off. Well, they have listened to the referee <laughs> as an explosive start here to the third round. And you heard Mike Brown, quality coach, one of the better coaches, really, a former champion in MMA now at American Top Team, talk about the battering ram, those knee strikes of Danny Sabatello. 
Good you, you heard Danny Sabatello okay, saying that he feels like he, one, one, he feels one, Brett John looking, one, searching for that Uchimata, meaning that he's trying to bring, what, he's Brett, holding on to that one arm, he's going to try to bring his legs, swing it up between Sabatello's legs to bring him over the top. This time he's looking for a triangle as Brett John's from the bottom. Good escape by Sabatello, and Sabatello, well, back in what has become his office in this is Bellator MMA debut. He has been so successful with this position. Nice job of pushing off of the fence by Sabatello, but he should, instead of holding on where he is, he needs to get that hook with the other leg. He'll have better control. He can even go to a body triangle. Okay, come on, wrist. Wrist neck, wrist neck. Wrist neck. Walk your fingers. Fight, Notice what Danny Sabatello is doing with his head and his chin, bringing it up tight, controlling off of the position. All of that is just outstanding grappling. Every time that I'm seeing Sabatello go to this one leg lock, it looks to me like he's almost looking towards a twister. Yes, thank you. Head on, head on. A definite clash of on. styles yeah, in right this the fight between the two newcomers and thus far the wrestling of Danny Sabatello has on, been his key to success and you know again this is debut on short notice the biggest stage a, a kid who obviously has a lot of confidence a lot of uh, credibility when it comes to wrestling and uh, he's using it it's what got him to the dance john well, yeah, when you're looking at a guy you know okay maybe not as many fights as a lot of other guys at 10 and 1 but that's a lot of experience but then all that experience in the nc2a's and all that time at purdue in wrestling he is used to competition competition is nothing new to him and coming in, getting an opportunity to go against someone with the reputation of Brett Johns and now putting on this performance, that is what we call doing damage and being just an outstanding fighter that's taking advantage of an opportunity. Brett Johns has two minutes and eight seconds to deliver some sort of Hail Mary here. And I know Danny Sabatello is making it impossible for him, but what can he do? What do you suggest Brett Johns do? Well, right now, with everything that I've seen, Sabatello is, he understands all these positions. And, you know, you can throw up the triangle and stuff. It's not going to be easy, especially Especially not now in the third round when he's sweaty and things, but you can always roll to those legs. When it comes to the wrestlers, the legs tend to be a problem. You and I love the way Sabatello continues to control those legs. Yep. You can see Brett Johns looking towards himself. You know, that's when that's this is what Danny's talking about. Talk about that Uchimata. He's looking for that swing of that leg up through the middle of the legs of Sabatello, and he's just making sure that that's not going to happen. Another waist lock takedown by Danny Sabatello. That leg Turk ride that he has been utilizing has been money for Sabatello throughout this fight. You see Brett Johns using his leg to get rid of it. Yeah, by the name of Abib Nurmagomedov used to do a really good job of control. Oh, he did any. Coming up on the final minute of this fight, a battle between Bellator, bantamweight newcomers, a division that we've seen a changing of the guard at the top with Sergio Pettis, now the new king at 135, Danny Sabatello, go for a ride. and Brett Johns here with 45 seconds left. Or was it the kind of ride I'd no, pay money wasn't. for in an amusement park? That's no, for wasn't. sure. 35 seconds. You saw, left Brett John, you saw Brett Johns get his hands locked together. I thought he was going to elevate him up. He wasn't able to do it. Sabatello was able to put pressure down on him. And Danny Sabatello just so active in all facets of this fight, John. Even now in, on his back, still trying to make things happen. Hey, he's coming out. Nice elbow by Brett Johns. Just not enough with very little time left. But this is the this is what MMA is all about. One nasty strike, and that could be it. The biggest come from behind win ever. But Brett Johns, top position, but I don't know if he's going to end up on top in this fight. I don't think so. And Danny Sabatello, a fellow Italian, no surprise, he's loquacious. <laughs> is that what you call that? Whoever, everybody. And, uh, and again, shades of another <laughs> Italian MMA fighter by the name of Phil Baroni. Back in the day, remember stapling Dave Monet to the cage in 18 seconds. And and uh, Danny Sabatello, hey, say what you will. That's a, a, a great 
performance on short notice against one of the better fighters at 135 pounds. Look, taking a fight against Brett Johns with one week's notice, that in itself is saying something. And to do the, have the performance that Danny Sabatello had tonight, just amazing. Take a look at some of this work. This was Sabatello, beautiful takedown, elevates Johns and brings him down. You see him shoot underneath, again, picks him up, slams him down. Beautiful body positioning, putting a lot of weight on Johns. Johns trying to roll through on it. He slides over to the front. Just an outstanding job, another takedown. This was just the difference in the fight. Danny Sabatello was able to get the takedowns, get the body positioning. You look at the fight stacks, just absolute domination by Danny Sabatello. Sabatello said he was here to steal Brett John's thunder. Well, he not only stole his thunder, he stole his lightning and his car keys. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges, Michael Murtha, Ken Coffey, Marcel Varela. All three have it exactly the same, 30-27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, the Italian gangster, Danny Sabatello. Make it five wins in a row, the biggest win of his career by far on short notice under the bright lights of Bellator I'm MMA. I'm the Italian gangster, Danny Sabatello. Well, he delivers on his promise. He stole Brett John's thunder, and he records a huge win in his Bellator MMA debut. Let's go back to Jen Brown. Well, thanks, Mauro. All eyes tonight will be on Bellator's featherweight division. Our next prelim features number seven, Leah McCourt, versus the women sitting slightly ahead of her at number six in Janae Harding. Now, of course, we've got our main event of the evening where we're going to see the number four ranked female featherweight, Leslie Smith, taking on the reigning champion, Chris Cyborg. And for both of these women, the road to get here was the road less traveled. I love animals. My mom would like to be dentist, but in my heart, I would like to be veterinary. Uh, we have some chickens, we have like five chickens, we have fresh eggs every day. His name is Manny Porcal. And we go pick up him. He's very little, he's like this size. So cute. And then he's supposed to stay this size. He's not the little one, but we love him. My dad's a minister, and so I grew up in the church. Spent a lot of time wearing dresses that had, like, the white collar with, like, lace around it. You know, it's super uncomfortable. And so finding a place where I could feel like I was doing my thing, definitely it was sports that gave me that. So I have always had my eye on whoever is the fastest and the best and the strongest, and, and that's always been what I want to get to. And how crazy it is, I was playing professional handball. And one guy saw me play handball, and then he said, I think you can be a great fighter. And then look at him, fighter? What is this? Like, I never think about fighter. No, I didn't know the guy saw me. He's a black belt from Shootbox Gym. I didn't know anything, but I started practicing training. And I have in my heart when somebody punch me, I like to punch back. And my coach said, no, this is you born with. My mom don't want to fight. She said, no, I know this is not for you. You need to study. She say she wants to be dentist. But now you say, OK, I'm a professional fighter. Oh, cool. People know now, you know, it's nice. Change, change the mind, especially for women's MMA. She's the first fight that I watched on TV was Cyborg against Carano. The energy in this crowd is unbelievable. Carano's in trouble. She is now the Strike Force Women's World Champion. First one, the strike force. Uh, second one, I was getting Invicta. Third one is the UFC belt. Now it's the Bellator. Everyone have a struggle. Everyone is not have a challenge in my in my life. Everyone is important, you know. It's fascinating how people can create this persona of being indestructible. No one's indestructible. The first time that I fought Chris five years ago, I thought I had a chin of iron. I think my style of fight is different. The other fight is more violent. I'm not overwhelmed. I don't give a fuck. 
Like, let's go. I mean, that's what we're here for. Let's do it. Five years pass. I'm a better fighter. You know, we've been training. I'm aware to fight. I'm turned cyborg. For sure, she's a better fighter too. I like to motivate people. Chess has definitely helped me to gain the patience to be able to take my time and to set things up so that I can strike at the right time. I like to punch. Before, I just go, 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 go. And now, you know, I go, but patient, see the moment, right moment to finish. The thing that I'm going to look forward to the most, coming back to my team and saying we did it. Not just to be the world champion, but to be the champion of people's hearts. This is the most important for me. Well, you love getting to know both those women a little bit better there. And Chris Cyborg, she's obviously known for what she's done inside the cage, but maybe not known as well, Josh, for what she's done outside the cage, her philanthropy work. She's done so much to give back. A little interesting note the folks at home may not know is that she's actually had Leslie Smith come and teach at one of her camps, her Pink Belt Fitness Camp. Uh, so she knows her well. And that's, I guess my question for you is, 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 is it difficult or more difficult to face a fighter that you kind of know personally? You know, they've, they've not just stood across from the cage. They've spent time together outside the cage. No, because they're professionals. And I've tra I trained with Gilbert Melendez for about two years before I fought him for the first time. And we separated right before that fight. But no, they're professionals. And this is exactly what it is. And also, the MMA community is very small. You know who you are. You know who you, know who you are. You know as well as all the other fighters that are around the community. You know who all the talk and the buzz is of the other fighters that are coming up. You know them. So, and you've met them. And there's cross paths. And the word is that this person is good. They know each other. And no, it's a business. All right. Well, it is champ versus challenger in our main event. But in our next fight, two women in the featherweight division looking to establish themselves as contenders and move into the top five. Here's Bellator's own Gareth A. Davies to break it all down for us. The matchup of Janae Harding and Leah McCourt brings together two female featherweight fighters looking to climb a ladder dominated on its top rung by standout champion Chris Cyborg. Ranked number seven in the women's featherweight division, Leah McCourt told me this week that without getting into a firefight, she believes in her superior all-round skill set against the New Zealand-born Harding, whose forte lies with her stand-up skills, durability and resilience. For this contest, McCourt, who has been out of action for 14 months, has been working with Conor McGregor's striking coach, Owen Roddy, and even the breathing coach of middleweight standout, Israel Adesanya. No stone unturned, as they say. In my opinion, the ambitious 28-year-old must fire blank at her rival stand-up and use her own smothering ground game effectively to move on to a five-fight winning streak. You down with GAD? Yeah, you know me. Thanks, Gareth. Good breakdown of this uh, important fight coming up in the featherweight division. Of course, the main event later tonight with Chris Cyborg defending the featherweight crown against Leslie Smith in a rematch. But right now, you will see number six ranked Janae Harding square off with the number seven ranked Leah McCourt. Our tail of the tape for this featherweight matchup. Take a look at that weight. There is a problem there, and that problem is Leah McCourt did not make weight, Morrow. 149.4. You're telling that me. That is a huge difference between 145, but Janae Harding's tough enough to say, I'll still take that fight. Well, she'll lose 20% of her purse, and Harding will try to make her lose her four-fight winning streak as we go to Michael C. Williams. From Mohegan Sun Arena, the prelims now continue as we go three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot eight, weighing in 149.4 pounds. Her professional record: four wins, one loss. Fighting out of Belfast, Northern Ireland, Leah McCord. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145.1 pounds as a professional. Six victories, four defeats, fighting out of Sydney by way of Gold Coast, Australia, Janae Hollow Point Hardy. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. So Kevin McDonald will oversee this battle between top 10 ranked contenders in the women's featherweight division. Harding at three and two in the Bellator MMA cage. McCourt at three and oh under the Bellator banner. 
The bell in round one, Janae Harding in the red gloves, Leah McCourt in the blue gloves, and immediately Harding splitting the guard with that jab and a kick. That's exactly what Leah McCourt wants, is to get those hands around the body of Janae Harding. That is her world. If she can get that grip on Janae Harding and take her down. She's a black belt in judo. She's got very good throws, and she's got a very heavy top game. Started training in judo at the age of seven. Started MMA training at the age of 19. Now at the age of 28, wants to move a step closer to title contention. Although, again, after missing weight, should she be? <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. But, you know, part of it, it, all, it all comes down to this. You're taking, you have certain responsibilities. Be on time, make weight, fight hard. She didn't make weight. That's something that she's going to have to change. And with all due respect to me, love two out of three is? <laughs> this one. All right, Harding and uh, McCourt grappling for position along the cage. A minute gone here in the first. It's a nice job by Janae Harding to stay on her feet because Leah McCourt is very good at off balancing her, her opponents and getting them to the ground. Janae has had a lot of experience with a lot of good fighters. In my opinion, her handlers, her managers put her in against some killers in the beginning of her career. It's like, man, you, you want to give your fighter a chance, and she's gotten better and better as her career has gone on. Her, her stand-up is outstanding, but there is that beautiful trip by Lee McCourt to get her to the ground. Right into side control for McCourt. Left side's on the wall, left side's on the wall. Don't worry about stepping over just yet. As a rear naked choke of victory over Carrie Hughes during her stint here in Bellator, that being the lone submission win of her career, and now trying to keep Harding on the map, but Harding able to get back up to her feet, reset in the stand-up position. Good job, bumping her hips by Harding, moving, keeping her arm out there. This is where she wants to stay. I want to stay to the outside and utilize my striking. Long jab and able to close the gap. Yeah, but this is again where McCourt will try to take advantage because obviously Harding with the the edge in striking coming into this contest. She does have the edge in striking. A lot of people look and say, well, why is she in this position against Cage? She's she is okay in this position with Leah McCourt in the cage. She's utilizing good head position, and you can do a lot of damaging strikes in that clinch position as long as your opponent is the one with their back on the cage. And as Gareth Davies mentioned, McCourt training with Conor McGregor's one of striking coaches in Owen Roddy trying to shore up here her striking going into this fight. Owen Roddy is an outstanding coach, not only in striking, but also in the grappling range. He knows exactly what he's doing, so Leah McCourt court has got someone that knows exactly what to tell her. It's just a matter of can she carry those instructions out. MMA, a global sport, and boy, many countries on display here during the Bellator 259 prelims. Harding going out of Sydney by way of the Gold Coast as McCourt secures the takedown. It was a nice hard go by McCourt to get the takedown. You see Harding working herself back to the feet. McCourt fighting out of Belfast, Northern Ireland. Lift that chin. It's really going to be a question if you're thinking about it as far as the conditioning of Lee McCord. I'm sure she's in shape, but how much did she try to lose that weight? Did she cut it off early or did she just say she gave it everything she could? Well, is she going to have the endurance to keep up with this pace? Because this pace has been and Especially in positions like this where yes. she is wearing the weight of Janae Harding pinned up against the fence. Again, utilizing her judo base, trying to improve her position. Coming up on the final 60 seconds of what has been an action-packed first round here between Janae Harding and Leah McCourt. Knee from Harding. A lot of good work by both inside. You see the punching of Harding. You see knees from McCourt. Both of them trying to just. Here goes McCourt. Oh, that hard coach again. 30 seconds left in the first round, and again McCourt securing the takedown into side control. Less than. 20 seconds now remaining in the round, and McCord with an opportunity here to make hay with this dominant position. But Harding scrambling. Fight then! Fight then! Fight then! Fight then! 
And we are at the end of the opening five minutes. Let them go. Come here. Come here. Listen to me. Okay? She doesn't. Okay. Good eyes. Good eyes. Listen to me. So, when she ever have the uh, over under and she tried to throw from the defense position, squeeze the hips in. Squeeze. Boom, boom, boom. She has just this. You're too dominant. Now, set up like Tiro. Set up. Nope. Heads down and big over and drive. You're going to catch it on the piece. Here's some of the takedowns by Lee McCourt. See that leg come across. That's a hard ghost. Beautiful throw. Common throw in judo, and she's got that black belt in judo. She's got that background, so, so that's what she's utilizing here. See her again with the overhook. You see her taking that look, trying to swing that leg out in front of Janae Harding. You see Janae Harding using head position to make it difficult. Two was it a difficult opening round to score, John? It's going to be a difficult. I'm, I'm guaranteeing that one judge is going to go one way and two are going to go okay, another way on that round because there was a lot going on. But you got to take a look at this is a fight. This is not a grappling competition. Who is the one that's doing the most damage? And I think in that round, although there was some good throws by Lee Court, I think Janae Harding was the one that landed more shots and did a little bit more damage. I think she's going to win. Nice elbow by Janae. McCord told us that she didn't think Harding was as fast with her striking, or in many ways, she doesn't really respect. I mean, she respects the striking, but she doesn't think she's a dangerous striker. And McCord now turning the tables as she has Harding against the fence. She had a body lock that was switched it over into an overhook. She's had a hard time as far as when she gets to the cage. Janae Harding is the one that keeps on dominating the position of where they're at. And there's the creating the separation and then delivering some strikes. Janae Harding before McCourt tries to close the gap again before eating these shots upstairs. Changes levels. Easily defended by Harding. Head kick by Janae Harding. And Harding now beginning to put it on McCourt. Yeah, McCourt's in trouble here with what we're seeing. High head there for Janae. That's why she ends up on top. Janae just needs to get heavy hips here, crush down on that leg. You see that leg that Liam McCord is using inside. Just press down, heavy hips, and you can land a lot of big, heavy strikes right now. Ground and pound from Janae Harding, looking to maintain the position, dropping a couple of right hands. Now looking to go full mount, no half guard employed by McCord. McCord trying to control Harding's posture. Harding drops another left. McCord active on the bottom, but eating these shots. Yeah, McCord is not reacting the way you, you want to see right now she's starting to cover in this position you can't cover start to move your body make it to where she cannot hit you based upon your body position McCord was stopped in her professional debut due to strikes has won four in a row since oh beautiful up kick by Lee McCord that landed and of course now the up kick leading into a potential triangle choke here by McCord of course, we remember our current middleweight champion, Gegard Mousasi, with his uptick on Jacare in Japan. But McCord here with midway through the second has Harding in trouble. Yeah, the, right now, she just locked up the, that triangle. It's not quite tight right now as far as there is space, but we'll see if Janae Harding is enough to be able to stay with it. In trouble, there's the tap, and just like that, Leah McCord comes back to submit Janae Harding. Leah McCord pulls out dramatic submission win moving to a perfect 4 and 0 in Bellator MMA that was a beautiful job by Liam McCord who was having a, some hard times but it was all about that up kick that up kick changed everything this is what happens when you get hit by a shot and your brain gets rattled you make some mistakes and that's what happened to Harding let's take a look at some of the action here Nice knee inside, and this is where Harding started to open up, and Leah McCourt was having some trouble. She goes for that takedown, but that's not a good level change. That's why Harding was able to just shuck it off, comes back with a high kick, and you see Leah McCourt starting to struggle in the stand-up, but watch this. Boom! That shot right there, that hurt. 
Janae Harding, and you see right away, watch that foot coming up. You can see how hard it hit Janae Harding. That was a big shot, and right away goes to the triangle. And right there, it's not locked up tight, but eventually she pulls it in tight. Watch this, boom, right on the jawline. That was a big game changer right there for Leah McCourt. McCourt, that started the downfall. And when you see her now pull her over, now it's getting tight. She's going towards the head, gets the tap. Beautiful submission, come from behind win for Leah McCourt. Stunning sequence leading to McCourt's first submission win via triangle choke. She also has a rear naked choke victory, but none sweeter than the win she has just achieved here in Bellator MMA. Make it five straight wins for Leah McCourt. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen inside, the Bellator cage, the triangle, brings it to a conclusion, the tap officially. Two minutes, 42 seconds into round number two, the winner by submission, Leah McCord. Leah McCord looking to move up the rankings in the featherweight division, and she will speak with our big John McCarthy. Nice show of sportsmanship there by Janae Harding after a very tough setback here tonight. Leah McCourt, that was heart, guts. You brought that fight back. It was the up kick that changed everything at that time. Talk to me about that fight. Yeah, I knew uh, today's a very tactical striker. I just beat him in deep, deep waters with a lot of people. So I knew it was going to be a tough fight. And I've got heart, and that's the most, the reaction I have is my heart. So I'm delighted. Did you realize how hurt she was when you landed that up kick? I seen her wobble, yeah. <laughs> well, then when she wobbled, she came down, and right away you went for the triangle. You set it up, it wasn't quite tight, then you readjusted it, and once you readjusted and you brought her over, you knew you had yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't think it was on, but I heard her choke. And I, was, and I was like, right, let's put it on properly. Well, your grappling has been what has gotten you all of your wins, and again, it was the strike that set it up, but your grappling went and got that win. You are looking at now moving up in the rankings in the Bellator featherweight division. Who would you want next? Um, anybody, I don't care. I just love fighting, I love improving, so anybody, all the girls in our division are top girls, so every fight's gonna be a challenge. Well, congratulations on a fantastic win. Congratulations on your first fight here in the United States. Everybody, your winner, Lee McCourt. Leah McCourt says her nickname, The Curse, comes from her being notorious for crazy things happening to her leading up to her fights. Well, a crazy combination led to the biggest win of her career, the up kick into her first triangle choke submission. It's kisses all around for the McCourt team. What a win as she will look to move up to, well, another few spots here in the Bellator MMA women's featherweight division. Let's get more reaction from Jen and Josh. Well, thanks, Maura. A beautiful come behind win there. I know you were familiar with both of these girls, Josh. You've covered them. What did you think about her dominant performance tonight? I mean, she, you know, coming back. Yeah, she came back from behind. But I mean, like, Janae Harding had, it looked like she had the fight under control and she landed some great shots. She just, one mistake, it could cost you the fight. And Leah McCart gutted it through. I've seen her gut through these positions before. I mean, she was stuck in an armbar in one of her previous fights that I called over in Ireland. And she wiggled out, got to the top position, and just dominated the rest of the fight. Dominant performance by Janae Harding, but make one. One mistake, and I got to tip my hat to Lima Court. Awesome, amazing, congratulations. Fantastic performance, all right. Well, tonight's co-made event, it features a rematch of our former Bantamweight champ, Darion Caldwell, taking on Leandra Ego. Now, Caldwell dominated Ego quickly, Josh, in that first fight. What does he have to gain for fighting him again right now? Well, right now, he needs to reestablish himself back in the rankings. And right now, he's not ranked because he went up to 145 to fight in the World Grand Prix there. And then he got knocked out against AJ McKee. So now he's got to reestablish himself in those rankings because he hasn't been there for 15 months. So that's really what it comes down to. Well, you said Darion Caldwell has some questions that still need to be answered. So what do you want answered tonight? There's so many questions I need. He's switched camp. He has new corners. He has new training partners. He's got new coaches. He's got new game plans now. Look, he's with a great crew. And I'm I'm excited for him at Sanford MMA because they've got great wrestlers. They've got a great group of uh, fighters to help him grow. Okay, but really what it comes down to is can they help him use his wrestling 
to implement his jujitsu like you see here against Adam Borg, who just so happens to be at Sanford MMA. So the fact is, is that he has all the ability to do what he does, but he needs to learn how to pace himself and fight at a pace. And if he can do that, he'll have success. Higo, though, falls right into the same pro into the same thing. He is someone who's learned how to be patient, fight for the positions, get to those positions. And when he gets there, he's dangerous. I grapple with Higo personally, and he is vicious on the grounds from the X guard to the leg, to the uh, leg locks, also to when he gets to your back. He is phenomenal all the way around. Both of those fighters together are guaranteed fireworks. Uh, we look forward to a lot's riding on this fight as both men feel like this is the fight to establish themselves in the Bantamweight division, especially, of course, with that talk of that potential, you know, featherweight, uh, Bantamweight, feather, Bantamweight, excuse me, there we go, World Grand Prix that our President Scott Coker has hinted at. All right, well, that is our co-main event coming up later on tonight. Let's head it back down to more on Big John. Back over to you. All right, thank you very much, Jen. And we are set for action in the big boys division. The heavyweights, number nine ranked Davion Franklin at 2 and 0. Oh. He takes on Tyler King, former professional football player, as we go to the 4 1 1 for this battle of the big boys. Well, professional football player started his career late. That's why you see that big difference in age. 26 years for Davion Franklin, 40 years of age for Tyler King. Here's Michael C. Williams. Tonight's prelim streaming live on YouTube. For those locked in on the channels Bellator MMA and Showtime Sports, we take you now to the heavyweight division. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at six foot six, weighing in 246.3 pounds. His professional record. 12 wins, nine losses, fighting out of Boston, Massachusetts. Tyler, the Marauder King. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at six foot three, weighing in 264.8 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated at two and oh, by way of Chicago. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, all day. Davion Franklin. In charge of referee Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, the man in the middle for this heavyweight encounter. During the preliminary portion of Bellator 259, Davion Franklin. All right, you ready, sir? At 2 0, oh, both ready? fights coming right, here in the go. Bellator cage while Tyler King, he returns to Bellator after submitting Josh Diekman via rear naked choke back in November of 2016. Already off balance due to the attack of Davion Franklin in the red gloves. Tyler King in the blue gloves, and John with Ryan Bader involved in the light heavyweight World Grand Prix, an interim heavyweight championship match will be held between the number one ranked Tim Johnson and Valentin Moldovsky. That's coming up Friday, June 25th. But Franklin and King in the heavyweight division, hey, you could be one punch away, you could be one fight away. Davion Franklin's got power, and he's already hurt Tyler King. Oh, and the jumping knee <laughs> by all take Davion Franklin, wow! Davion Franklin, we've seen in his first fight how much power he has. In his second fight, he hurt someone and then kind of got winded trying to finish him. And he learned a big lesson there. That's why you see him. He's just taking his time. He did a big move there with the flying knee. Amazing athleticism. But when you have the power that he has in his hands, it only takes one shot. All he has to do is take his time, give some movement. Tyler King is not comfortable on his feet oh, right now. And you can see hand. those shots right there, he can only take so many. Franklin played college football, also wrestled, and his wrestling and his football career helping him come into the MMA sphere and boy putting together some crisp combinations on the plotting the slower Tyler King. Tyler King's got a good ground game. In the submission world, he's he's the guy that's the dominant fighter of these two. But he has to get Damian down there. And to get him down there is not easy and he's gonna have to walk through all of the power that Franklin has. Franklin just needs to keep on putting pressure and just look for that opening. Oh, and beautiful lead left hook behind the car. What a sweet strike by Tavion Franklin. And they're winding up, knocking King down. And King gets crowned in round number one by all day, Tavion Franklin. That's what I'm talking about.
talking about power. The, the King is up. He, he should not be on his feet right now. He's in trouble. Davion Franklin has power. And when you have that power, it's just the way that you use it. Take your time. Be confident in it. Don't worry about making these mad rushes once you see him hurt. Look for that opening again and go after him. I'm very impressed with what Davion did in this fight. He took his time, and when he had him hurt, he finished. Take a look at the power here with the big right hands. Just missed. Left hand, right hand off the top of the head. That's what puts him down. Just snaps his head back. Watch this right hand land. Bing! Right there off the top of the head. That puts Tyler King down. Good stop by Dan Mirgulata. That fight is over. Robin Black going to sue you for copyright infringement on the face. <laughs> Robin Black doing a great job breaking yes, down is. Bellator MMA action on the World Wide Web. And boy, Davion Franklin doing a great job breaking down Tyler King as Franklin improves to 3-0 with his second knockout victory. And if he could if he could do this all day, then well he's well on his way to a very successful career here in Bellator. MMA. Absolutely. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end officially inside the Bellator cage. Two minutes, two seconds into round number one by knockout. Still undefeated, the winner all day, Davy Hunt Franklin. In the heavyweight division, you can make a lot of headway quickly. Davion Franklin quickly dispatches Tyler King. He is now 3-0 and oh in Bellator MMA. This heavyweight, well, he's a heavy hitter. Let's go to Jen Brown. Well, thanks, more If you want to watch that or catch up on our past fights 24-7, now you can do that on our Bellator Pluto TV channel. No passwords, no payments. Just drop in and enjoy the show. It's available now on your favorite devices, so look for us in the sports category. Well, next up, undefeated rising star Aviv the King Gozali meets Sean Superfly Felton here to break down this lightweight showdown as Bellator's broadcaster across the pond, Gareth A. Davies. A savant or even magician with his ground skills, 20-year-old Israeli Aviv Ghazali has mesmerized his first five opponents in Bellator, defeating them all by first-round submission. The king, to give him his cage sobriquet, is the son of respected MMA veteran Haim Ghazali, with father and son having appeared together on the Bellator 234 event in November 2019, an emotional night when the father and fighter retired after his victory. Opposing the magician on the mat tonight is 30-year-old Sean Superfly Felton, who comes into this his Bellator debut with a 5-2 and two record. The man from Buffalo, New York, will look to bulldoze the kid, 10 years his junior, but must be wary of the anaconda skills that have already wrapped up a handful of losses for the Israeli Ghazali's quintet of victims. Well, we just heard Gareth talk about how dangerous Ghazali is on the ground. So what does Felton need to do to keep this fight on the feet and, you know, not put himself in danger? He just needs to circle and stay away. And honestly, every time Aviv comes in, he needs to touch him with something. Make him respect that space. If he can do that, he can have a successful night. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be the most exciting of game plans. But look, those things, when people start getting desperate to get the takedowns, they start they start opening up more, and it's easier to land the harder and cleaner shots. Well, you look at Ghazali. He's kind of that new breed of jiu-jitsu fighter, right? He doesn't just do one thing. He can attack the entire body, and that makes him really dangerous, huh, Josh? Yeah, I mean, he's got submissions by rear naked chokes. He's got heel hooks. He's got anacondas. He does everything, and he does it very well. And he is that new breed of jiu-jitsu type fighter, and that's really what it comes down to. You see him here attacking with the arm bar. He goes through the arm bar, then he gets to the back, and he finishes with the rear naked choke. Beautiful job. And one of my favorites, one of my all-time favorites, was putting him into the lead here. Is the fastest yeah. submission in Bellator history in 11 seconds. He rolled with the MNR rolled, jumped right into the hill hook, was able to get the, the finish in 11 seconds. Just dynamic all the way around. And then you'll see 
year, he goes right to the Anaconda choke. He has so many weapons that he possesses, and he knows how to attack from all different angles, all different positions. Here's that inverted triangle. He's also working the arm there as well. He hits that, boom, then makes the transition right to the Kimura. Nice job by him. He is so good in every position, and, he's, and, and your opponents have got to be worried about everything that he, he brings to the table. All of those five submissions coming in the first round. When we asked him how we saw this fight ending, what do you think he said? Uh, submission. In the first round, that's right. <laughs> All right, well, can he secure his sixth straight first round finish? It's time to find out. Moro? All right, thank you very much. Action in the Bellator MMA lightweight division. The five and oh submission magician, Aviv Gozali, going up against Sean Felton, making his Bellator MMA debut. Our tale of the tape for this lightweight matchup is real simple. Look at that 5-0. and oh. Aviv Gozali is looking to make that 6. Sean Felton is going to do everything he can to make sure that doesn't happen. Here's Michael C. Williams. Tonight, here's Bellator 259 prelims. We'll move to the lightweight division. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At six foot one, weighing in 154.3 pounds. His professional record, five wins, two losses, one brawl. Fighting out of Buffalo, New York, Sean Superfly Felton. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot ten, weighing in 155.7 pounds. As a professional, he stands undefeated at 5 and 0. Oh, he fights out of Batyam Israel, introducing Aviv, the King Gonzale. And your referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Kevin McDonald assigned the task of officiating this lightweight matchup. Aviv Gozali looking to move to 6-0, looking for a six straight submission. Sean Felton, well, he is looking to make a splash in his Bellator MMA debut. The Southpaw, Gozali moving to Orthodox Red Gloves. Felton in the blue gloves, and you know Gozali wants to spend more time on the canvas than Rembrandt, and so far, many masterpieces to his ground game. And immediately gets Felton to the ground into full mount, John. Aviv Gozali is now in his world. This is exactly where he is dominant when you look at this matchup. On the feet, Felton has the ability to stay with Ghazali, but on the ground, this is like working against someone that you, know, you haven't felt what he can do. Nice job by Sean Felton. Look his hands are coming. Felton. Watch your back on the back. Aviv, oh, kept by Ghazali. Aviv Ghazali was raised on the mats. He has been there his entire life, so his ground game is absolutely fantastic. He's similar to what the Graces always said. I was, I was born on the mats. Guess what? So was Aviv Gozali. And he's a new generation of ground game changing levels looking for the takedown. Against the fence, though, running out of real estate. And in fact, Felton now falls into top position on Gozali. And uh, well, Gozali was, very comfortable from his back. That was Gozali actually jumping hard, looking for that heel hook right now. It's got a lot of pressure on that leg. And up it is. Six professional fights, six submission wins, another lightning quick victory for Aviv Gozali and some concern for Sean Felton. As, well, Gozali, he wants to take your limbs home with him. Well, he just took that limb home with him. You recall that weigh in and you saw Sean Felton doing the, the fake head slice and pulling his head off. Aviv Gozali just made him pay for that little... Yeah, he went to take his leg off. He went to take the leg off, exactly. Here, Gozali actually pulls guard. That is not felt in taking him down. Gozali is deciding, I I'm going to get this to the ground, and I'm going to lock up this leg. He knows exactly what he's going to. Look at the leg entwining over that left leg. Now he's got the leg in the position. Now he starts to put pressure on that heel hook. There's a lot of torque on that ligament in the outside of the knee. It's getting just twisted around. A lot of pressure once he extends right here. That's huge pressure on that 
Hopefully there's not a lot of damage to Sean Felton's leg. Gozali submitted Edward Mudavitsky via heel hook at Bellator 225 in August of 2019. Now gets his second heel hook victory. His sixth consecutive win to begin his career. He is the flag bearer for Israeli mixed martial arts. A second generation mixed martial artist. He and his father, Haim, became the first father-son to compete on a Bellator MMA card, and you know his, well, his dad, he's a one proud papa. He's a proud papa because, you know, he has decided early on, my boy is gonna be a fighter. Well, he is. All right, let's make it official. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen inside, the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of the heel hook. Just one minute, 17 seconds into round number one, the winner by submission. The undefeated king, Aviv Gozali. Well, he's the king in terms of uh, submissions. And indeed the king when it comes to the fastest submission in the Bellator MMA. Hey, he's, he's sliding a bit. That, that one went, what, a minute 17? <laughs> Incredible stuff. It really is, John. All right. We've heard enough of John McCarthy and yours truly. Let's get more reaction from the fight desk. Well, thanks, Mark. Josh, you got to love that delivering on what he said. He said, I'm going to get another first round submission. He did just that with the heel hook. It was beautiful. What did you expect? I told you that. I told you that's exactly what was going to happen. No, he is just phenomenal, and he attacks all limbs, all, all joints that he possibly can. He's phenomenal. And if I walk you through this, like what he did here is when he sat back and pulled him into guard, pulled Felton into guard, he threw that right leg over, started attacking the heel hook. Now, the problem is, though, Felton, once you roll through, you really can't keep rolling because the cage is in the way. So what he did, Aviv just did, is he sat back on it, started opening up on the hill hook, and was able to get the tap. Actually, it was a verbal tap. We could hear it from up here at the desk. Yes, we could. Now, when... Yeah, you can listen to it right here. Go ahead and take a listen to this. Anytime, it, like John will talk about this all the time, John McCarthy will talk about verbal taps. As soon as you yell out something in pain or you say tap, tap, it's over, done. You don't have to just tap. So he moves to 6-0 and here in Bellator, all wins by submission. When you look at the lightweight rankings, you know, where do, where do you feel like he fits in in that really deep lightweight, you know, top 10? Yeah, he's got to break himself in there, but I think, honestly, a really good matchup for him would be someone like an Adam Piccolotti, who is also a very good grappler. He's also a very good wrestler, and I think stylistically would make for a really fun fight. I really like that those two ferrets getting after it when it comes to submissions, and I think that matchup would be awesome to see. All right, well, that's a great uh, insight there. We look forward to look forward to see him back inside the cage. All right, tonight, our five-fight main card starts at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, live on Showtime, and the night kicks off with tune-in material as Master Valerie Loretta. She returns to the cage with all intentions of keeping her pristine record intact, but her opponent, Hannah the Hurricane Guy, has other plans tonight. Now, of course, the night will culminate with the featherweight championship bout and rematch match of Chris Cyborg and Leslie Smith, but sitting in the third position, a stylist matchup between the undefeated Austin Vanderford and Fabian the Assassin Edwards. Now, it is often said that Styles makes fights. Well, here's our UK correspondent, Gareth A. Davies, to make sense of this one for us. This matchup between the number three and number four ranked fighters in the middleweight division pitches American Austin Vanderford and Britain Fabian Edwards into a traditional tussle between wrestler and striker, at least on the surface. Edwards told me this week this is a fight in which he will show his ability on the ground as much as on the feet. Edwards, highly touted of course, and with just one defeat in ten career fights, says he must go through the gears this time earlier in the fight, spot on from the Brit, who has promised us to show all his fighting tools against the determined Vanderford. This is a pick'em for sure. Will Edwards display a different pace this time, finish with his heavy strikes, or even show his ground game? Or will Vanderford increase his prowess in the division and nullify the invasions of the assassin? You gotta love Gareth. They're doing a great job of getting us hyped for that one. And I know, Josh, you are looking forward to the style matchup of these two. So why should fans at home be excited about this this fight? Well, it's a contrast of styles. I mean, you got Fabian Edwards and you've got Austin Vanderford. Austin Vanderford was a really good wrestler, vicious ground and pound. Fabian Edwards, really light on his feet, great lateral movement, very vicious kicks and striking. And so it really comes down to who can implement their game plan is gonna have success tonight. And that's one thing that's really impressed me by Austin Vanderford. He's actually come on into 
terms of his wrestling and his ground and pound, but he's also opened up a lot more with his submissions as you see here. He is so physically strong and so heavy on top. He controls so many positions, but Fabian Edwards with his athleticism and beautiful up kicks, as you see here when he fought Falco Neto. It was so vicious, he had gotten taken down. Nice three up kicks in a row, stepped up and finished with a nice left hook right hand. He is so dominant in all of his fights. Same thing with Austin Vanderford, but it really comes down to a contrast of styles and who can implement their game plan. And there's also a little bit of emotion, uh, you know, in this one. These two have been getting into it all week. I know it even started maybe even before fight week. Looking forward to that one. All right, well, that is our middleweight showdown, and it's just one of the five incredible fights we have coming up later tonight on Showtime. Mauro, back down to you. All right, to paraphrase Lauren Hill, ready or not, here they come. We've got Sumiko Inaba squaring off with Christina Katsikis. It is a battle of Bellator MMA flyweights. Here's a highlight of Samiko in her first fight in Bellator. Great positioning. Goes with the ground and pound. Look at going to the elbows. That's beautiful, hard fighting. That makes the referee say, oh, I'm going to stop that fight. Great finish by Samiko. Our tail of the tape for this flyweight matchup. Take a look at everything. It's so similar across the board. One and one to one and oh. Same with the age, same with the size. Both of these ladies are here to fight. This should be a fun one. Here's Michael C. Williams. It's late night in the UK, and we thank those that are still tuned in to BBC I player for the Bellator 259 prelims as we go now to the flyweight division set for three five minute rounds introducing the blue corner at five foot four weighing in 125.8 pounds her professional record one and one she fights out of hanover massachusetts presenting christina the meat grinder Katsikis. and across the cage her adversary fights out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 125.5 pounds. Just off a TKO finish in her debut. She now stands one and oh as a professional. She fights out of Maui, Hawaii. Introducing Sumiko, Lady Samurai Inaba. In charge to referee Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson will oversee this flyweight fight. Sumiko Inaba won her professional debut in Bellator MMA, while Christina Katsikas would love to win her Bellator MMA debut. She is one and one. It is Inaba in the red gloves, Katsikas in the blue gloves, and immediately Katsikas looks for the takedown, but it's Inaba in control off her back. Inaba looking for a high guard there. Get her on the cage. Get on the hips, Samiko. Get on the hips. Get on the hips here. Samiko right away getting that foot to the hip. That's going to help her get back to her feet. Nice job by Samiko Inaba. Inaba known as Lady Samurai due to her Japanese heritage. Fighting out of Maui, Hawaii. Katsika's fighting out of Hanover, Massachusetts. And Inaba back to her feet. Turns the tables on Katsika's couple of overhooks. Break, break off if you want. Yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. Samiko's trying for there some things. Go. She just doesn't have the body position right now to go for the takedown that she's looking for. Samiko looking to control that head. Samiko's looking for that single leg takedown. And Inaba down momentarily, but Inaba feeding a couple of punches to the side of Katsika's head. As Inaba's going to try to wall walk again. Samiko's using a lot of strength right now. Keep the wizard on the other side. Marcus Sikas in her Bellator MMA debut, and obviously the pressure of debuting on the big show. We know it can produce gems or burst pipes. Sikas hopes to shine bright like a diamond, but Sumiko uh, Inaba, she did shine bright like a diamond in her Bellator and pro debut as she stopped Jessica Ruiz via first round TKO. That was a really nice job by Inaba to turn on the fence. You saw her actually grabbing the face. Ooh, using it as a leverage point to turn Kasikas into the cage. She's delivering some forearms and elbows from close quarters. Izzy Naba, two minutes have elapsed during the first round. And there's another elbow across the face of Kasikas by Naba. 
Because yeah, yeah, with that overhook, wants to work the wizard. Now just trying to stay connected to Inaba. Quick separation by Inaba lands the right. Inaba doing a very nice job actually gaining some space and landing hard strikes here against the cage. Good head position by Inaba. You see the where she's basing herself out on. She's got. Great position, both under hooks on the arms. She decides when she pulls it away. Nice body shot, comes up to the head. Inaba went to college for a nursing program after high school, did it for two years, decided to pursue fighting instead, and putting it on Katsikas with these elbows against the fence. What you're really looking at right here, Marwa, this is this is a stand-up grounding pound. She's utilizing that cage like it's the floor. And she heard you, and so she'll make it more of a traditional grounding oh, pound with the opportunity <laughs> presenting itself, but... Putting her weight on Katsikas. Keeping her hands inside. Going for the elbows like we saw in her first match at Bellator. And Inaba told us that she knew that Katsikas would be looking for the takedown. Well, look at the, diff the one difference you're seeing with Inaba was taken down by Katsikas. You saw her when she got pushed into the cage, put the feet on the hips, started to look to get herself back up. Right away, you saw Katsikas going to the close guard, which seems, says she's being more defensive. Disengage here if you want. You can disengage. Nava's corner telling her she can disengage if she wants. Does so, delivers the knee. And again, Katsikas doggedly determined to try to get the takedown with the single leg. Great defense by Inaba. Nice job, and right to her back. Love the fact that Inaba's always looking to damage, always looking to land strikes. And she's doing that, although Katsikas comes back with a right before Inaba again closes the distance, but. Sumiko Inaba striking, proving to be the difference here in the first frame. Sumiko Inaba just utilizing that clinch work and she's just done. That was a big elbow strike to stand up position. She's definitely got that Hawaiian tradition of let's scrap, bro. And a big advantage in terms of strikes landed, and Sumiko Inaba continues to land strikes as Katsikas desperately looking for the takedown now turns the tables, just tries to pin Inaba along the fence, buy herself some time for recovery. Sumiko's landing those shots at about a 96% rate. And Inaba with a flurry of elbow strikes, and now just a steady stream of right hands. It's all Sumiko Inaba in round one. In the clinch game, Samiko Inaba landed some big elbows inside. That was a big difference maker in this round. When she got positioned, she utilized her head to keep Katsikas where she wanted her, and the elbow strikes just rained in. Pushes the head, elbows away, brings the kick up high, gains some distance to try to land some strikes. Everything she did near the end of this round was just fantastic. Big look at the body shot there. You can see that hurt Kasikas. She's going after, goes up to the head. Everything that she was throwing was landing. 96% landing rate on those strikes. Two flyweights in the embryonic stages of the respective MMA careers, but Sumiko Inaba off to a stellar start after round one, while Christina Kasikas will look to Ready? Rebound here in the middle frame. We found out that undefeated Bellator MMA flyweight world champion Juliana Velasquez is going to make her first title defense against the number four ranked Denise Kielholtz at Bellator 262 on Friday, July 16. A couple of flyweights showcasing their wares in the Bellator MMA cage tonight. Nice inside low kick. And, and Inaba told us, John, she wanted to mix it together. She wants to show that she is a complete mixed martial artist from the get-go. Well, she's showing right now. Just take a look at the difference. You're seeing that Kasikas is really taking some lunging shots. She's getting herself out of position while Samiko is just... 
tries to relax, keeps her base, has good position so she can land counter strikes. Right now, Kasikas needs to figure out a new way because right now she is not looking good. She's starting to look a little bit winning and she's winging shots. And meanwhile, Inaba continues to connect. Look at the change level. She said she's as comfortable going for the takedown as anyone again. Complete mixed martial artist. Kasikas played field hockey in college. And while she's looking to score here now, got the back of Sumiko Inaba on the takedown by Kasikas. But again, Inaba popping up. Now Inaba ending up in the top position here. North side position. She needs to swing around that. Looking for the crucifix now. She's got a, one of the arms hook. Big heavy hammer fist. Cross face, cross face. What Inaba needs to do is utilize that left arm and cross face, pushing Kasikis' head off to her right, right shoulder. Keep, that will allow her to come around the back all the way. The 30-year-old Sumiko Inaba, her boyfriend yes. Sean Rush Keep is her head coach. Now Kutsikas looking to move to top position, but Inaba doing a great job of just keeping Kutsikas at bay, and Inaba going to try to wall walk again, John. Yeah, well, Inaba made a mistake, and that's what Kutsikas took advantage of, and good for her to do it, because Inaba made a mistake positioning, got out of position, and it, it got turned on her. We'll see if she gets back to the right now. Is Kutsikas burning energy looking for this takedown? This is good for Kasikas right now because when she was in the stand-up, she was getting and that up. So this, that's where Inaba wants to be. This grappling position right now for Kasikas, this is a good thing. Yeah, Inaba's saying, hey, she's a complete mixed martial artist, but she loves stand-up the most. As Kasikas looking to scoop her up. But Kasikas unable to improve her position. Well, what we're really seeing here, here's your contrast. Kasikas is looking to get the fight to the ground, stay close to her so she doesn't absorb damage, and ride this thing out with the clock. While you're seeing from Sumiko Inaba, she's trying to fight, she's trying to end the fight. And Inaba turns right back into Kutsikas, under two minutes left in the second. Well, get that. Unhook your leg there. Get your legs back. Base. Now square up. Get a good base here, your left. You got that left arm under No, 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 no. no. Scramble the positioning and it is Inaba in top position from the half guard of Kasikas. Slashing elbow across the face by Inaba. Inaba's in a very good spot for her right now. She loves the half guard position. This is where she opened up on her opponent in her first fight and then got to mount. We'll see if she can do the same thing here with landing big heavy elbow strikes. All she's gonna do is hold you. We gotta work here, Sumiko. There we go, there we go, beautiful, good job. Keep bringing her back down, break her flat, break her flat again. There we go. One of the things that I really like about what I see with Smith, she got arm triangle choke that she can go towards. That didn't work out for her, but I love the fact that she doesn't try to land the small things. She lands big, heavy shots. A minute left here in the second. Kasik is looking towards either a straight ankle lock. It doesn't look like she has a heel hook right now. Yeah, she's looking for her first submission in this, her third of fight. She's gone the distance in both of her pro fights. And Naba making a point of hoping to not go the distance. Another series of elbow strikes and 35 seconds now left in the second round of this flyweight matchup. So Miko Inaba in top position against Christina Katsikas. And Katsikas continues to hunt for the submission. Looking for the toe hold right here. There we go. Might want to transition. Nice, nice block the by yeah, Barbie. Yeah, great yeah, block. There we go, yes. She defended that again, very again, well. Again, 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 but again, you got to love it because he's got more towards submission. Ground and pound from Inaba with just seconds left here in round two. And Katsikas was forced to break the grip due to the onslaught from Inaba. Stand up. You're doing okay standing. You're actually doing okay. Don't be desperate to get a take up. She's clenching you, okay? Take some water. Take some water. I'm You're doing fine. You're doing fine. You think it's only gonna take one thing to turn around. One good punch, one good clench, okay? I know you're tired. 
she's getting tired too. She gets more and more tired every minute. She okay? can't believe you're still here right now, okay? Right, you're moving around, you're not, you're gonna come off this round circling. You can load up that spinning back fist, throw it again, but fast, yeah. not hard, fast. Yeah. You're light on your feet. Follow, follow you gotta your stop jab in. And 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 wait for that big old Replay here, this was that takedown by Katsikas to get Naba down to the ground. She then brought her back down again once she stood up, trying to ride the position. And she's looking for those submissions. If she's gonna win this fight, Second she knows down. she's gonna win it Second with down. a submission hold. She took a lot of damage in trying to get towards that leg. A lot of big heavy shots towards the end of the round. Time. But Doctor. both ladies working hard just in different fashions. You wanna continue? Yes. Okay. You wanna hear more emphatic yet? Yes. Okay. Okay, just gotta protect yourself. Here we go. The mouse developing under the right eye of Christina Katsikas, who was asked by the cage side physician if Ready? she wanted to continue. Ready? She said yes. I need a more emphatic yes. She said yes again, and here we go with round number three between Sumiko Inaba, 1-0 and in the red gloves, and the 1-1 one one Christina Katsikas in the blue gloves in her first fight for Bellator MMA. Was kind of slipped by a big miss on the Another kick. right hand lands. That body kick lands for a knob up. Break away here. There we go. Stay to piecing her up. Push kick and then Katsikas with the body lock looking for the takedown, John. This is exactly where Katsikas wants to be. She's looking for that, that body lock. She's get her close. Now get her out of being. Is it where she wants to be or should she be where she's trying to win? <laughs> she wants to be in a position where she's not absorbing punishment with elbows or kicks by Adama, but right now, and really the gas tank is a big factor here. You can see the Kasikas is getting very tired. She's, like, she's trying to throw those big shots, and when they miss, they burn even more gas when you try to now get your balance back. Inaba in just her second pro fight. What, how would you rate her, her striking and the way she's putting together her punches and kicks? Well, what I like right now is you saw her. She came in, she gave her attack, and she backed out to reset. That's smart. The one thing that she's been having a problem with is she's crushing in her own space. She's the one that's coming in, throwing shots, creating that pressure oh, to space. Caught it with a counter right hand. That's Katsikas came in. Stop. You got to move your feet throughout your striking. Don't set your feet. Keep your feet moving, sliding and moving. And that'll keep you at a distance where you can keep those hands flying. And a tiny mouse under the left eye of Inaba. She switches to southpaw. Delivers a left body kick, but got fatigue written all over the face of Christina Katsikas, but also very valued, very game. Trying somehow to figure out the riddle that is Sumiko Inaba. And again, Inaba continues to find a home for that left kick. You gotta, you gotta give Katsikas credit. She's tough, man, because she is tired. Her arms are heavy right now, and she's just looking for that moment that she can close that distance and get back towards that body. Again, the left hand lands for Inaba midway through the round. A push kick, another left kick by Inaba. And total strikes landed. It is a rout for Sumiko Inaba. 84%. Wow. She's gone down. <laughs> well, you know who hasn't gone down yet is Christina Kosicki, who's been on the receiving end of this striking barrage. That's what I'm talking about. As tired as she is, she's still hanging tough. I'm just worried about one of these left high kicks landing. Because when you're tired and your hands are heavy, oh, it doesn't take, you know, the, the timing is there. And it seems like you're going to block it, and it just gets through. And Nava's corner calling for the liver shot. That left hand there. There's a left hand kick. Now mixing it up, delivering some punches, another body kick, and Christina Katsikis trying desperately to stave off the barrage from Inaba. She's not fighting. And on cue, John McCarthy, referee Todd Anderson stops the fight. Sumiko Inaba, Lady Samurai, delivers in her second professional fight, improving to 2-0. Here in Bellator MMA and the mother of, of one 
overwhelmed with uh, emotion, putting in all that work, and the work pays off tonight. Boy, it did pay off, and she landed a lot of strikes in this shot. Big right hand right here, followed by the left. Comes back with the right. You see Kasika swinging and missing with a backhand. The kick comes up high, lands right to the face. Beautiful high kick by Anaba. Anaba near the end of this third round was just having, just, it was like being in the gym, punching on a bag, just continuing to just throw your strikes. Nothing was coming her way. It was easy for her to just step to the side. Big kick to the body. Kasika's not even bringing her head up and looking. She's just tired, worn down from all of the damage. So Mika Anaba with a big, big win. And she wants to send a big mahalo to everyone supporting her in Maui as she celebrates with her camp, Sumiko Inaba, 30 years of age, now 2-0 and in the Bellator flyweight division. And as we mentioned, of course, Juliana Velasquez will defend that flyweight title just announced against number four ranked Denise Kielholz. That's coming up at Bellator 262 on Friday, July 16. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Inside the Bellator cage, referee Todd Anderson steps in, waves off the contest due to unanswered strikes officially. Three minutes, 35 seconds into round number three for the winner by TKO Lady Samurai, Sumiko Inhaba. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Sumiko so Inaba, that was just an impressive display of striking. You had great ground, and the striking that you landed, you landed at about an 84% rate. Talk to me about that fight and how you were feeling. Well, I just want to say thank you to everybody, my coaches in my corner, uh, my boyfriend, Sean Rush, uh, Wayne, and, you know, the whole camera, Ohana, and my, my training partners, thank you, you know. Thank you so much. They prepared me for everything. Um, I tried to be a mixed martial artist in this fight and mix it all together, and I'm glad my striking finally came through. So thank you so much. You were an outstanding mixed martial artist in the fight. They have a saying in Hawaii, it's called just scrap bra, <laughs> and you were just scrapping out there because oh, yeah. you were throwing all kinds oh, of techniques. Thank you. Um, I tried to, you know, keep my distance and, you know, show all my growth through these last few camps. I, I tend to just come in, you know, guns blazing, but I tried to, you know, slow it down a little bit and see my shots and I thought I was able to do that, you know. Um, try and stuff the shot, just get back to my feet and I can't thank my training partners more enough for getting me, you know, repetition over and over and it really translated through, so. Well, congratulations on an outstanding, oh, dominant so victory. It was a beautiful performance. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank Ladies you and gentlemen, you're so winner. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Very gracious, Inaba. Victoria Sumiko Inaba. She puts the KO in Sumiko. Now 2-0 oh with two wins via form of a knockout. Uh, Neema to watch as she continues her blossoming MMA career. Let's go back to Jen Brown. Well, the Lady Samurai getting it done there, Josh. What do you think of her performance tonight? What, quite impressive. For such a young fighter, she just mixed everything up very well from touching of the head, body kicks, leg kicks, coming back up to the top. That's what you want to see from a young fighter. And just seeing her progression from the time she first fought to this fight, hopefully she's just going to continue to get better and stay, stay a gym rat. If you become a gym rat, it just gets better from there. You know, she's a hometown. Maui, Hawaii, you heard Big John talk her about it. You're scrapping. Those Hawaiian fighters, man, they can really throw down. They love to, they love to fight. They, oh, they just do. love to. We'll move it to 2-0 oh inside the Bellator cage. A very impressive win for her there. All right, Showtime Sports is delivering a rapid-fired series of events this May and June as Showtime Championship Boxing returns next Saturday with the long-awaited matchup of future Hall of Fame famer Nonita Donaire and undefeated WBC Bantamweight world champion Nordine Ubali. That's next Saturday at 10 East Eastern, 7 Pacific.
Well then, Sunday, June 6 on Showtime Pay-Per-View, it's the fight creating a viral superstorm. Now 50 and O Floyd, Money Mayweather gets back into the ring for an exhibition bout against social media sensation the Maverick Logan Paul and our own Moro Ronaldo will get to speak with him a little bit later on tonight. You want to stick around for that one. Now, no doubt the world will be watching and tweeting Sunday, June 6 live on Pay-Per-View on Showtime. We've got four more fight nights coming your way in an action-packed June. Now, Bellator MMA returns on the 11th for a welterweight world title battle between the phenom Douglas Lima and the unbeaten Yaroslav Amosov. Then, Saturday the 19th, a WBC middleweight title bout between champ Jamal Charlo and Juan Macias Montiel. And the weekend of the 25th, Showtime Sports takes over your television on Friday night. Bellator's Tim Johnson faces Valentin Moldovsky for the interim heavyweight world championship. And on Saturday, Showtime pay-per-view, Gervonta Davis will meet Mario Barrios. Well, tonight, a championship bout featuring the queen of combat sports, and she has earned her seat amongst the Bellator champion and amongst the greatest fighters in the history of the sport. This is Chris Cyborg. The most feared female in MMA history. What a white hand! The champion, Chris Cyborg. You don't want no trouble. When she gets those hands going like that, it is a thing of beauty. One championships everywhere. She's beaten anything that breathes total domination. She is the complete MMA fighter. Oh, my God! You don't want no trouble. Well, I think trouble should be Chris Cyborg's middle name as she has successfully put away all but two of her opponents over her illustrious career. Can she do it again tonight against Leslie Smith? Well, we will have that answer coming up on Showtime. Moro, back over to you. All right, Jen, thank you so very much. We get set for action in the Bellator MMA light heavyweight division. The number seven ranked Grant Neal puts his perfect 5-0 record on the line against, well, Tyree Fortune, who's also a perfect 5-0 and, oh, and ranked number eight. And now we welcome to the cage Tyree Fortune. Fortune family, well represented in Bellator MMA. His brother is the Bellator heavyweight Tyrell, but Tyree Fortune at 30 years of age, perfect five and a wrestle two years in community college with his brother. Made his Bellator debut in January of 2018, defeating Michael Quintero via unanimous decision. Coming off a victory over Chuck Campbell, John, at Bellator 233, November 2019. So it's been a long time since Fortune has been in the ring, and that one was via split decision. Yeah, that was a very close fight. He walked away with the win, but my only complaint about Tyree Fortune, he just doesn't seem to fight enough. If this is what you want to do, you have to get yourself in the cage and get busy so you can get better. You bring up a great point because he's been a pro since 2016. That's five years. This is his sixth professional fight. That's my boy. And we now welcome his opponent, Grant, the true Neil. Grant Neal walking with purpose down that Bellator MMA ramp, and he's known as the truth, and he's proven to be the truth thus far. He is 5-0 overall, including four wins here in Bellator MMA. He attended CSU Pueblo and was a freshman All-American fullback in football, won the NCAA Division II National Wrestling Championship in 2014. And oh, he's currently finishing pre-ed at University of Colorado Denver. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> Not as much as Grant Neal is doing with his. The, the, the big thing about Grant Neal and what I love about it is, look at how much he has been fighting. Here's a guy, he even had fights canceled on him. 
but still had three fights in the year 2020. This is his first one in 2021. And in talking about his opponent, Fortune, he says he knows that Fortune has some explosive power, powers his strength. But Neil says it is also going to be his weakness tonight as we take a look at some of the highlights from Grant Neal's career. Well, Grant Neal is super strong. He is very good at getting you to the ground. And if he gets position, he can squeeze, he can end the fight at any moment with a beautiful rear naked choke. He just powers his way through that. We've seen Grant Neal start to improve with every fight. Does he improve again in this one? Our tail of the tape for this matchup of 5-0 and oh, light heavyweights. Everything doesn't really matter. 5-11 to 6-2, 74 to 76.5. But whose O is going to go? The Loonies would be pleased. They've got five on it. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Here at the Bellator 259 prelims, we now present a feature fight. Three five-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 205.3 pounds. His professional record undefeated at five and zero, oh, fighting out of Portland, Oregon. Tyree Fortune. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot eleven, weighing in 204.4 pounds. As a professional, he too stands undefeated with five wins, no losses from Denver, Colorado, Grand, the Truth Neal. In charge, your referee, Kerry Hatley. Kerry Gotcha Hatley is the referee for this light heavyweight <laughs> matchup, and it's an important one. Two top 10 ranked light heavyweights, two undefeated fighters, and as a former police officer, John McCarthy, ready? Ready? I'm sure you appreciate their 5 0 records. Neil in the red gloves, Fortune in the blue. Well, we just had a Naba from Hawaii, so it all matches up. <laughs> Loving that motion already. Beautiful. Just let it build. Thank you, thank you. The light heavyweight division in the midst of what has been an amazing World Grand Prix. We're down to the semifinals. Current champion is Vadim Nemkov defending the title throughout the tournament. But number seven, Neil, number eight, Fortune. They are in the hunt. Grand Neil giving a lot of feints inside. And how cool is it, John, that they have to go through each other as Neil tries to go through Fortune with this takedown attempt, but in order to move up. You know, this is what it's about. You know, if you, if you want to be a fighter and you want to move up in the rankings so you can get that shot, now is your time to impress. You've got an undefeated fighter in front of you, and this is what gets the eyeballs. This is what makes the President Scott Coker look at you and say, okay, what did you do against that other undefeated fighter? What do you look forward to in this matchup? What questions are, are you looking to have answered uh, from both Neil and Fortune in this fight? You know, I'm looking towards for Tyree Fortune. I believe he wants to actually stay on the outside. I, want, I think he wants to use his wrestling to be defensive so he can use his hands. And I think you want to see Grant Neal wants to get inside, bully him against the cage, or get him down to the ground. Fortune said his biggest strength is he doesn't quit, never capitulates. He will never quit, he says. If you can't put him away, he's going to keep coming for you thus far in this. Now his sixth fight, the five previous opponents unable to put him away. Oh, and he lands a nice short left hand from the southpaw stance on Neil, who ate it well. Now, he did eat it well, but that was a well-placed shot. Had some power on it. You saw Neil buckle a little bit. Inside low kick employed by Fortune. Tyree's fight against Chuck Campbell. He got rocked by Chuck Campbell, but did fight his way out of the situation. So he has shown he has heart. He does not quit. Nice feint by Neil, lands the body kick, good counter right hand from Fortune, and again, some great technique. And we are coming up on the midway point of the opening round. Pivotal matchup here in Bellator MMA's top 10, 205-pound division.
Christian and Neal changing level secures the takedown into side control on Fortune. And, and for Tyree Fortune, this is not good for him to sit there and just lock up the hands. He needs to really start working towards getting back to his feet because this is not where he is a comfortable fighter. He's not a guy that fights well off his back, even though he trains with guys like Fabiano Schoener who really know what they're doing. I've seen him on his back before, and he just tends to stay there. He's got to get, use this cage to get himself up off of this ground. Watch us. Watch us. Short elbow strike from Greg Neal inside control. They're both talking inside. One of the things that we've seen from Neil, and it's been his time with Jake Ramos and all the guys at Elevation, is, man, he is just getting better and better when it comes to when he gets the fight to the ground. He stays busy and does damage. And Neil attacking the body again that time. Fortune able to drop his left uh, arm, What's but that? still Keep it to the nose. eating the strike. And, and Neil, or excuse me, Fortune said that his biggest advantage would be his heart and will, both being tested right now by Grant Neal. Grant Neal getting that hook in the inside. Grant Neal has a rear naked choke win in his last fight. He began his career with a rear naked choke victory, looking for his third RNC. Right now he's using a cross face against him. That's not comfortable. It's a painful position, but you see Tyree just holding the hands, keeping the pressure off of his neck. And he's starting to have problems. And that's it, there you go, Grant Neal is now 6-0, and oh, and he records his third submission win all via rear naked choke, sending Tyree Fortune to his first defeat. And tonight, Fortune favored Grant Neal. He was bold. Yes, he was. Take a look at what Grant Neal did. Did a very nice job when he goes for this takedown. Gives some ground, but drops levels, gets in to Tyree Fortune, is able to take him to the ground and right in the side control. That was a big move to stay in that side control. And then when you see Tyree trying to get up out of the position, all of a sudden, Grant Neal uses that to slide again behind his back and now has his arm around the neck. Put a lot of pressure on that with just one arm. Twisted his face around for a little bit and then gets that arm under the chin. You see that hand come up, and when you see that hand come up, you know it's not long. Back to back rear naked choke submission wins for 25 year old Grant Neal, who remains perfect. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado with the Genesis Training Academy and Elevation Fight Team. Come on. And he utilizes strength, his wrestling, to set up the submission. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end by way of a rear naked show. The tap officially four minutes, 20 seconds into round number one by submission. Still undefeated Grant, the truth Neal. The truth is in the results and they are impressive as he reels in another victory, lands a, a big one in the form of, uh, well, a man who was also undefeated. Let's go to John McCarthy. I love seeing you, too, because every time you come in here, you're putting on a performance now. You went after a guy who was undefeated in Tiger Fortune, good wrestler. You took your time. You finally went and changed levels when he came into you and got that takedown yeah. right into half, uh, right into side control, excuse me. How did you know that from that position that you were going to do damage? What were you thinking? Uh, so in our, my training camp with uh, Coach Jake and Coach Peter, um, we were really just setting up everything throughout the entire training camp. It's not necessarily about my opponent. It's about getting better. When I walk into the cage, I look at that wall right there, and that's where I want to be. It's awesome to have opponents that want to come out here and fight, and I got to take the steps to get to where I want to be. But that's the goal. It's not just go in, go in and win. It's go in and be a champion, and that's what I'm trying to do. Well, we talked about on the broadcast what the improvements you've made with your coach, with the guys that you're working out with at Genesis and Elevation Fight Team. 
you just keep getting better and better. And where is your confidence right now as you're coming through this fight? I have a lot of confidence. I mean, I have the best teammates and coaches in the world and, and on my elevation, you know? So after practice and stuff, we could go fly fishing, get a workout in, do what we need to do. But being in Colorado at elevation and having the opportunity to train with some of the best in the world, I'm just being a sponge and trying to soak it up. Sometimes it's like drinking from a fire hose, but I love it. Two rear naked chokes in a row now. Is this, that is now your go-to submission? Uh, I, I feel like I'm a little dangerous there, but we're still working. Like, like I said, it's a, it's a work in progress. I'm never done with the job. I'm excited about this, but I'm ready to get back to the, to the drawing board. Well, with as strong as you are, anytime you wrap those arms around someone's neck, I think there's danger. That was a great win. Congratulations on a beautiful performance. 6-0 and oh now, ladies and gentlemen, Grant Neal. Great line from Grant Neal. Sometimes it's like drinking from a fire hose. Well, tonight he provided fortune with a fire hose blast of offense, and Grant Neal looking to hook the Bellator Light Heavyweight Championship in his future. Of course, right now we are in the midst of the final four of that Bellator Light Heavyweight World Grand Prix. Let's go back to Jen Brown. Well, thanks, Moro. Great performance there by Grant Neal. Now, two weeks ago, Showtime officially confirmed a long-rumored event at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Now, Floyd Mayweather will face social media star Logan Paul. And let's just say, well, things got a little interesting. We're behind the scenes, we're working. Now, we have you mic'd up because I heard you wanted to be mic'd up. Is this yeah. is this gonna get a little rowdy? Gotta have you on there. Everything good? Yeah, amazing. Cool, good to see cool, you. Cool. Cool. Likewise. Right. June 6th. Get ready? Oh, we're gonna walk? I'm willing to fight both in the same night. But one thing we go, one thing we do do, we can dance. That's one thing I do do. Yeah, we do. I don't want to go there. Yeah, I'm trying to steal his hat. I swear to God. Boy, do you just laugh at all that stuff up there? Oh, I heard, you know I heard that so many times, so many times. I'm a real fighter. And I'm the real deal. What's up? You wanna, you wanna run it two on one night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. Get the paperwork for this ball. Get, get Al Hammond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me call Al Hammond. Let's make it happen. I'm on two on one, one night. Got your hat. No camera, no camera. Take it. No, seriously. We gotta get fucking serious about this shit. This ain't cute anymore. Well, Sunday, June 6th, it is all about the bragging rights. The champ, Floyd Money Mayweather, meets the social media don, Logan Paul. Now, we will hear more from the Maverick later on tonight during the main card on Showtime. But here's a quick teaser to whet your appetite. Having grown up watching Floyd Mayweather, beat everyone and i i gotta be honest i never thought i'd be uh stepping into the ring with one of the greatest boxers of our generation it's it's weird man it's weird but it's a blessing um it's an opportunity i couldn't pass up i'm a showman and i'm gonna put it on a show come to six well that's uh, an exciting one i know a lot of people are looking forward to it what do you think about that one josh what really interests me the most is he's talked about fighting MMA. He has. And in that conversation, you know, there's a couple names out there that he's thrown out. Him and Dylan has had some beef in the social, in the Twitter, Twitter fear, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, there's some, there's some fights there that I'd like to see him fight in MMA. Uh, there's a lot more than beef between him and Dylan Danis, but I think Armoro is going to ask him about that. We'll get some more insight on that one. All right. Well, just one last fight sits between us and our main card live on Showtime. Now tune in at the top of the hour because featherweight gold is on the line. 
the champion, Chris Cyborg, once again faces off against MMA veteran Leslie Smith. And here to break down that rematch from our Bellator UK office is Gareth A. Davies. Chris Cyborg makes the second defense of her Bellator featherweight crown against Leslie Smith in a rematch of a fight five years ago in Curitiba, Brazil. That fight was won by the champion with an emphatic first round knockout. So what can Smith, the peacemaker, do differently this time around against a woman who is arguably the most dangerous female fighter ever to step into the cage? Smith, who has four wins and one defeat since that fateful night against the Brazilian, will clearly have to weather the early onslaught, get respect on the feet, and smother the champion's work by getting hands on her and taking it to the ground. Tough job here for the challenger, a huge underdog, but this is MMA, and upsets do happen. Back to you at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Well, thanks, Gareth. Hey, when we talked to Leslie Smith this week, Josh, she said the biggest mistake in that first fight is that she didn't respect Chris Cyborg's power. She said since then she has been working on her defense and really working on, you know, not going power for power like she did in that first one. So how does she do that tonight against sort of the most dangerous knockout striker in all of women's MMA? <laughs> one up. I mean, she really's got to she's got to slip she's got to slip the punches, create some distance either out, all the way out or all the way in. If she slips the punches and slides in, trying to grab and control the positioning, she's got to get to that position. See, she's good in the clinch. She's good at doing the dirty boxing. She's got to make a Cyborg fight a dirty fight when it comes to the fence and the clinch. What I like to see, though, is also use those kicks. That will keep Cyborg guessing on where the punches and the combinations are coming from. If she can do that, she'll have a chance of taking this into the deeper waters. That's exactly where she wants this fight, in the fourth and the fifth round. Well, why is that? Because she did talk about a little bit, you know, she says, I do think I have the advantage if it gets to those deeper waters. She made the comment about muscle. Muscle tires quickly. Uh, you know, to do that, though, what do you want to see from her? I mean, I know you talked about staying off that cage, but how does she make sure she doesn't end up on the other receiving end of Chris Cyborg? She puts Cyborg's cage to the, or back to the cage. That's what she does. She tries to push her back foot on that cage. If she can do that, she can dictate where Cyborg's going, then she'll have a chance to go ahead and tire her out and start to drag her into those deeper waters. That's what she's talking about. Well, she did say, um, you know, she felt like that first fight was stopped early. This one is about revenge for her. Now, Chris Cyborg, it has been five years. How has she improved since they first stood across from one another? She is not, before she used to throw caution to the wind, she would just go ahead and take, you know, she'd take a shot to give a shot. And she doesn't want to do that anymore. She keeps her defense up. You know, she is getting a little bit older, but she's still vicious. Her tenacity is just unparalleled. She's someone that just walks people down and throws huge shots. As you can see right here with Blake Down, she's just touching her, touching her, gets the takedown. She's vicious on top, heavy, heavy hits. Blake Out turns her back, beautiful job in making the transition. That's her very first submission. She chooses to keep things on the feet because she loves to deliver pain. So she says, this is going to be violence. Beautiful violence, and this is exactly what she delivers, is beautiful violence. And then if you look at the style of lovely Leslie Smith, that, you know, come forward, that pressure, that tenacious attitude she has, I think it'll make for an exciting one. Sometimes you walk right into those shots, though, so you've got to be very careful. I think, honestly, it's meant to be fireworks. This fight's going to be fireworks from the get-go. Well, one thing is for sure, uh, you know, Leslie says she really has no fear of Chris Cyborg. She called for that first fight. She's calling for this one, and with that pressure forward, I think we're in for an exciting matchup. Now, that is coming up later on, only on show. Time, but we're going to be back uh, with our last prelim right after this. Are you ready for the show? Undefeated champion, Nortino Bali. A high quality operator takes on future Hall of Famer. One of the most polished stars in all of boxing. No need to donair. He remains at the top of his game. Undefeated versus legend. Bali versus Donaire for the Bantamweight World title only on Showtime. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Cyborg! Mixed martial arts legend Chris Cyborg looks to cement her incredible legacy with her relentlessly aggressive style in a war with top contender Leslie Smith fighting to stake her claim for Bellator Gold. 
Bellator MMA Live tonight on Shota, where warriors rule. Well, we have enjoyed our time here at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut, and we are going to enjoy it even more next time around because, yes, fans will be back at the Fight Sphere for Bellator 260 as we continue with the Bellator 259 prelims on a beautiful Friday night here in the state of Connecticut. And our final preliminary fight of the night will take place in the lightweight division as Syed Awad takes on Nate Andrews here at the Fight Sphere. And now we welcome to the cage name, the Snake Andrews. Look at everybody clapping when your 30 songs. Nate Andrews making that walk for the first time down the Bellator MMA ramp. 37 years of age, 16 and 3, including 10 submission wins. Nicknamed the Snake because he has a penchant for choking out his opponents, Big John. <laughs> yeah, he's a penchant for being just a very good, solid fighter everywhere, but when it comes to where he is strongest, the ground is his area. He is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt, but he's one of those guys that he's better with the no gi than he is with the gi. When he gets into an MMA fight, his jujitsu is very strong, very solid. He's got great cardio. He is just a very well-rounded fighter. Well, no off-season for Bellator MMA. We heard from J. Cole's latest uh, bars for Mr. Nate Andrews, but... He is looking to, well, make, uh, make a point here tonight that he belongs on the biggest stage. And now, making his way to the cage, Sayed, the assassin. As a professional, 23rd appearance in the Bellator MMA cage. Tied for second all-time in Bellator MMA with Michael Chandler and David Rickles. One appearance behind current lightweight and featherweight champ Patricio Pitbull. Big John, I know no fighter ever wants to be called a gatekeeper, but at this stage of his career, that's what Syed Awad is, and it's going to be up to him to try to keep Nate Andrews from storming through the gates of Bellator MMA tonight. <laughs> well, I will tell you, Syed Awad has been with Bellator since 2013. He's been here a long time, and he is a dynamic fighter when it comes to the stand-up. He has got a powerful right hand, but he tends to get caught in situations where he believes that he can be on the ground with someone and then just ends up getting caught in a worse position and then a submission happens. He needs to be very smart, use his fight IQ, keep this feet, keep this fight on the feet as much as possible, and land that big right hand. Our tail of the tape for this lightweight matchup 23 and 13 versus 16 and 3 but it's that 37 years of age which is the guy at 37 that is going up and which one is going down here's michael c williams tonight here at mohegan sun arena the time has come to conclude the bellator 259 prelims with three five minute rounds in the lightweight division Introducing first the blue corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 155.7 pounds, making his Bellator debut. He enters with 16 professional victories, three losses. Fighting out of Providence, Rhode Island, Nate the Snake Andrews. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And across the cage, his adversary tonight fights out of the red corner. At 5'11", weighing in 155.1 pounds, the Bellator veteran stands with 23 professional victories, 13 defeats. By way of Gaza, Palestine, he fights out of Heath, Texas, introducing Sayed, the Assassin Awad. And with the bell rings, the 
referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata will oversee our final preliminary contest here at Bellator 259. The assassin, Syed Awad, looking to get back on the winning track. While Nate the Snake Andrews hopes to pick up a win right, ready, in his sir. first fight ready, in Bellator MMA. The bell in round one, Awad in the red gloves, Andrews in the blue gloves, and John Awad recently moving his family to the Lone Star State of Texas and hooking up with Fortis MMA. Not a bad place to hook up with, you know. Awad has moved around a little bit. It was always with Millennia. There's that big right hand. That's what, that's what Nate Andrews needs to be careful of. And a frenetic start to this fight. Look at this right here. This is where Awad needs to really use that fight IQ. Don't be taking someone to the ground that on the ground is at least your equal, if not better. You are stronger in the stand-up. Utilize that power that you have with that right hand. Use the stand-up here against the cage to land shots and dirty boxing, but break away and go back to that stand-up and that power. And a strong start in the striking department for Syed Awad, his striking proficiency has accrued 10 knockout wins in his career. Good head position here by Awad. Wrist grappling taking place. So Andrews stapled to the fence for now by Syed the Assassin Awad. And you can tell Awad is looking for the takedown. He's starting to lace the leg behind. He's starting to look for little things to off balance Nate Andrews. So he wants to get this fight to the ground. Andrews said that in scouting Awad, he said Awad is good at being the hammer, not so good at being the nail. There's a lot of people that are good at being the hammer. <laughs> some are good at being the nail. Being the nail is never a good thing. <laughs> Doesn't mean that some aren't good at all. And there's a, that was a cut already. Beautiful right elbow by Awad that landed flush right in the middle of Andrews' face. Oh, and Andrews goes down, but Awad thinking he may have had a walk off there, but you know, spot the fight IQ. That's exactly what you're seeing out of Saad right there. And Syed Awad. Oh, and that time. That was accidental head clash. Accidental head clash. Well, that's going to help Andrews because that'll get him out of the position where he's not. Maybe a little right. buzz from the legal shots. Brennan, he did get hit by their, their heads clashed. But yeah, there was no go. intent and nothing done by Awad in any All manner. Right. That Time to keep it ready. ready. Oh, Let's go fight. That. So Awad fighting like his Bellator MMA career, career is on the line, John. A strong start for the veteran here in round one and thus far a rude awakening in the debut in Bellator for Nate Andrews who's now coming back with strikes of his own. Good counter right hand by Awad. Another right cross lands. And again, very impressive the way Awad is fighting. No, he just took a big shot. Big left hand from Andrews. Right hand. What a fight. But Andrews is overextending here. Andrews goes down again to his back. Now's when you can go down on the ground. Andrews needs to get himself centered on here and start to control the wrist. And right now, Awad is very good at being the hammer. And being smart about making Andrews get back to his feet. Oh, straight right hand down goes Andrews yet again. I don't want to see this. And Syed Awad wins in style. A huge sigh of relief for the 37-year-old Syed the Assassin Awad as he picks up a scintillating victory due to his strikes. Well, not only was he the fighter, then he was the referee because he called his own ending. <laughs> he called his shot, literally and figuratively. Very impressed with the way that Awad was being smart in this fight. We see him so many times where he gets so involved in thinking, I'm going to finish this fight, goes down to the ground with someone when he shouldn't. He backed off of Nate Andrews multiple times, used the power that he has. Let's take a look Explosive at some of these shots. Explosive stuff in this round. That shot kind of glanced, glanced off the top of the head. You can see Nate Andrews is not that hurt. He's there to protect himself. But here was where the, their heads clash. See, Awad comes in, throwing, throwing shots. Head comes up, boom, hits the chin area. 
and that's why you see Andrews going down. Got a restart, big right hand. Andrews ate a lot of power shots, and they just started adding up to the point where he wasn't able to stop what Awad was bringing. Awad being the guy looking, saying he's not able to fight. The referee looks, goes, you know what, you're right. End of the fight. Nice, nice win for Saad Awad. Saad Awad told us that, hey, I know the position I'm in. I've made mistakes, but I plan on putting on a great performance to get back on a winning track, a streak. And, uh, well, I would say mission accomplished. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a great performance for this MMA. You're doing something well there. And that is Syed Awad's 16th victory via first round knockout or submission. His 11th first round KO as we make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Three minutes, 16 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Syed, the assassin. Syed Awad, winner via first round knockout. Very proud of his heritage and proud of the fact that he gets to go back to his new home in Texas. A winner once again in the Bellator MMA cage. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to hurt him. No, when he went down, he was like, I thought he was okay. Yeah, I saw that. Let's go to Jim Brown. Well, thanks, Maura. Josh Saitawa told us that he, you know, wanted to get back to his winning ways. Looks like he was able to right the ship tonight. What do you think of that performance? Uh, he went out there and did what he normally what he did what he normally does, except this time he's a little bit more defensive. But he came out grinding right off the bat. He was able to get some nice shots in, and every time he landed clean, he kept following up. And that's exactly what he needed. He needed to get a win and get back on the winning track. This game is about confidence. So now, once he's got one, it's easier to get two. It's easier to get three. He just can start building on that. It's a good place to start. Well, it was a great performance. We uh, we in addition to that, we had five other finishes, eight fights, six finishes tonight. Why don't you take us through them because uh, they were pretty spectacular. Yeah. Let's, let's first start with Liam McCourt. He came with a beautiful comeback tonight. That was so nice with the beautiful up kick right there against Janae Hardy. Janae Hardy fell right into this triangle, wasn't able to escape. You see Liam McCourt starting to set it up, pulled it a little bit tighter, but it didn't get tight until Liam McCourt put the arm across the, the hips and was able to get the finish. Nicely done by Liam McCourt. Great comeback, great victory for her to catapult her even closer to that title shot. Now with Devion Franklin. He came out, all he has to do is just stay composed, not leave himself open, and just use his God-given talents, his abilities. You can see here, beautiful overhand right with the power he possesses. He just comes in, touches and touches, and the fight is over. Lights out. Great job by Franklin tonight. Aviv Gonzalez is I don't even know what to say. The kid is just phenomenal. He's good all the way around. He's spectacular. He pulls into the guard. He gets to the top, gets the mount. Before this transition here, he pulled him down on top of him into the guard position. He was able to wiggle over to the, to the hill hook position. You can hear the verbal tap. Nicely done by Aviv Gonzalez. His submission streak in the first round continues on. Anaba. She came out just vicious with her stand-up. Touch, touch, to the body, with the elbows. She landed some clean elbows throughout the fight and was just doing damage throughout the fight the whole time, mixing up from the legs to the body to the head. Nice finish. And now Grant Neal, he just continues to get better. Unbelievable work by him tonight. You saw him get the takedown, pass right to side control, gets to the back in the scramble, and just so strong. And you see the physical strength he possesses. Gets underneath the neck, finishes up the submission. The sky's the limit for this young man. I can't believe how good he is. And he just keeps getting better every single fight. And that's what you want to see from young prospects. Absolutely. Well, uh, eight fights there in our prelims. Six of them finishes. Fantastic job from all of our fighters tonight. We've got an impressive main card coming your way. Uh, 
at the top of the hour on Showtime. Uh, but first, you know, let's talk about this because this is announced today. We're going to have fans back, Josh. We're very excited about that. Fans will be in the audience coming up next month. Now, if you want to get tickets, you can head over to Ticketmaster.com or you can get more information on Bellator.com. All right, well, we've got five great cards, uh, five, excuse me, great fights on our main card coming up. Let's talk about our first fight of the night. We've got Valerie Lareda taking on Hannah Guy. This fight was bumped up to the main card. Let's talk a little bit about that. These are very young fighters, Josh, and there's some pressure being the main, you know, opening opener, excuse me, on a big, you know, night on Showtime. Let's talk about the fans. Let's talk about why can't <laughs> wait to get the fans, fans back in. I'm so pumped for the fans. Um, no, there's a lot. There's a lot of pressure right now because you've got bumped up, unexpectedly bumped up because we lost a fight, and. I got to tell you, Valerie Loretta, she is coming in with that presence of like, hey, that I can go ahead and do this. And she's got two vicious knockouts. She's phenomenal in terms of her stand-up, her lateral movement. She sticks and moves. She does a great job all the way around. She just really needs to make sure that she stays composed and not let the spotlight get to her. I think she'll have a successful night. Well, we were talking about this earlier. When you look at her size, I mean, she's a 125-er for a woman. You know, having she's coming in with two back-to-back -back knockouts. That's impressive for a girl, a woman of that size. Well, let's just not talk about the females. Let's say, like, even for males at 125, you very rarely see knockouts. And the fact that she possesses that power, and, the, and, her, and not just to mention, she's done that with her hands and her kicks. Sure, the kick helped set up the drop, but she finished her off with the hands, and then her last fight, she was able to get a vicious knockout with her with her hands. So she possesses power everywhere, and she mixes it up. She's very hard to fight because of her lateral movement. She sticks and moves. She's a phenomenal fighter. She is, and for relatively a newcomer to the sport, she's only uh, had a few fights. She's really a well-known fighter. She's really done a great job with her presence, her social media presence, and and so let me ask you that because this is this is a great opportunity for a Hannah guy to come in and upset, you know, a, a, a star and really make a name for herself. Yeah, this is up to Hannah Guy to actually come in here and not let the spotlight get to her, being on the opening fight, being the opening fight for Showtime. Just stick to the basics. Track her down, touch her, touch her, and the more you touch her, things will start opening up. That's all she has to do. Let's not try and go out there and do something that we're not used to doing just because now we're the opening fight on Showtime. Well, we're looking forward to seeing those two. That's one of the five great fights we've got coming up. And of course, let's not forget, we've got Bellator Gold up for grabs, where Chris Cyborg is defending her Bellator Featherweight belt for the second time. And she's going to face MMA veteran Leslie Smith there in our main event. Plus, we've got another rematch in our co-main event as Leandro Ego looks to settle the score when he faces off against Darion the Wolf Caldwell. Uh, you know, we've got Josh. I know you talked about this earlier. Your uh, uh you know, you said this was going to be your favorite fight. We've got number three ranked Austin Vanderford taking on Fabian Edwards. Plus, we've got Julia Willis. He's taking on Mikon Mendonca in a welterweight feature bout. And, of course, you know, well, the night's going to kick off with the fight we just talked about. Undefeated Valerie Loretta taking on Hannah Guy. Five incredible fights. It's going to be a great one, Josh. Well, look, outside of the, the main event, which is a title fight, the one that has the most title implications tonight is the Austin Vanderford fight, along with Fabian Edwards. Those two right now are cat they're number three and number four. The winner of this fight has a good chance of possibly being in that mix now, saying, hey, I'm gonna fight the next fight for the title of the winner of Tokov and Mosasi. And what's great about this is that, that traditional like throwback style versus style, right? We got wrestler versus striker. It's hard not to get excited when you see these two. I'm pumped because just the jibber jabbing back and forth. The two of them have been talking trash through social media, through um, through press re releases. They've been going back and yesterday it heated up at the weigh-ins and they got so heated up that Vanderford walked off the, the wrong side of the uh, off the, the desk and ran into one of our camera guys because he was still facing Fabian Edwards. And so it's just great that the two of them are going. Uh, could this be a fight of the night? I was just curious, you know, we've, we've got some great fights. We talked about them all. Do you think that could be a fight of the night tonight? I think it has the potential of being fight of the night. I think Jaleel Wills could potentially still it because with his performance but Austin Vanderfer and Fabian Edwards right now like I said the most title implications and the jibber jabbering back and forth and the jawing back and forth even when they were wearing masks as you can see right here you can still see their jaws moving and they were just getting after it it got so heated even when they were facing the cameras you can see right here you watch Austin yeah. put up his his, his uh, arms and you can just see them still talking back and forth to each other I loved it I was sitting there just just basically like going this is gonna be the fight this is gonna be the fight so these are the things that makes uh, fight fans excited this is what 
what gets me excited so I know fans at home should be prepared to watch this fight. Oh, we are excited for it. Uh, you know, it's interesting. We were talking about um, uh, Vanderford earlier. You know, he's making that move. You know, he's been at 185 since he's been here in Bellator. It seems like he's really settled into that frame, you know, especially, you know, he doesn't have that typical 185er frame. You know, it's it's impressive to see how well he's done at middleweight. Well, what it is is that he trains with just stone cold killers, and a lot of them are from Bellator. You got Dalton Rossa, who's undefeated, Johnny Eblen, who's undefeated. You've got Yaroslav Amosov, who is fighting uh, Douglas Lima for the title at 170. Now, Yaroslav Am and uh, Amosov has the best record in MMA at 25 and 0. Those are his training partners. I got to tell you, there's probably a bet in the locker room on who's going to lose their O first because they're all undefeated and they're all just studs and they all fight here in Bellator. If there's not enough pressure already, not just trying to stay undefeated <laughs> not and win. I love it. All right. Uh, well, that is just one of the five incredible fights that we have coming your way at the top of the hour. That's going to be nine Pacific, six Eastern on Showtime. Don't go anywhere. We are live next. Mixed martial arts legend Chris Cyborg looks to cement her incredible legacy with her relentlessly aggressive style. In a war with top contender Leslie Smith, fighting to stake her claim for Bellator Gold. Bellator MMA Live tonight on Showtime, where warriors rule.